What's good, everybody, man? Welcome to another episode of DSA Above the Rim, your number one basketball show for all of my Detroit family and all my non-Detroit family out there. What's good, everybody? We got a special show for you today. We got uh, two special guests that will be joining the show. For First, let me get to these introductions, man. We got my main man, Evan O'Brien, who got next in the building. What's good, man? What's good, everybody? Uh, I'm so excited to be part of DSA. I'm a new member. Uh, I'm really excited for the show today. It's going to be a great show. I'm, uh, I'm just super happy today. Let's have a great show, everybody. Yeah, and if you just didn't hear, yes, Evan is a new member of the DSA, so make sure you guys all go subscribe to his channel. His link is uh, should be in the description. But we got my man uh, Detroit Drew in the building. What's good, man? I got me a mini fridge full of Drew Weisers. I'm here with the boys, and I'm ready to talk some Detroit basketball. Let's get it. All right, and one of our special guests, my main man, Everything Team. What's good, man? Uh, what's going on, everybody, man? Let's talk some Pistons, man. It's been a while since I've been on the show. Uh, I'm ready to talk, man. Let's get it. Yeah, it's definitely been a while now. I know you are wondering we will have. Oh, we got Robo JMO. Because <laughs> we do this for the fans. We do this for everyone. Uh, uh, Detroit Juice. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, I have no idea what you're saying. So yeah, like while, you're while you're going about. ahead and figuring that out, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give the shout-out to the people in the chat. Make sure you guys come in and like that video. If you guys have not, which I'm sure you guys already are, go subscribe to Everything King. Uh, King, thanks for coming on, man. We greatly appreciate it, man. Hey, man, anytime, man. Hey, I love talking sports. I love talking Detroit sports, man. Shout-out to everybody in the chat, man. I see Kyle Webb. I see Oliver. I see Matt. I see B-Ball. And I see Micah's gaming him so far. If you guys are in the building, make sure you guys go ahead and leave a comment down below. Uh, Jamo, you still in robo mode? I didn't know I was in robo mode in the first place. Oh, yeah. Big time. Big time. Big time robo. Uh, it's all good, man. It's all good. But we're we going to start with the uh, first question. Make sure you guys like the video if you haven't already. So, uh as everyone knows, the big news is the Pistons went out and hired a GM. But it seems not only did they have uh, Troy Weaver. So what I, what I want to say is uh, everything came in. What's your first thoughts on the Pistons hiring Troy Weaver? Was he the best candidate? Was he the person that you wanted? What do you think about the uh, decision uh, to go out and get to find him actually uh, coming to this team? Um, Troy Weaver is a solid pickup, man. Yeah, obviously not the player that I wanted. Everybody knows who's I. I'm probably sure everybody wanted the same person, but that's that just wasn't about to happen. Um, but Troy Weaver, man, first thing I thought of instantly was NBA draft. Uh, who he's draft. I started looking back through some of the old rosters, some of the pickups, uh, some of the moves they made as an organization over there in OKC. Um, you know, he's been around for a long time, but he's coveted by a lot of teams in the, in the, uh, in the NBA, man. And they, uh, it, it's been teams going after this guy actually for a couple of years. So the Pistons were really lucky to get this guy. And um, I think he's going to do a, a great job in the draft for us. Yeah, I, de I like after, uh, you know, I have my own opinion on who I want us to draft. But after we got him, I was like, I don't care who we draft. Mm -hmm. And it's not because I don't care. It's because I know whoever we get, no matter how upset the fans be, they're going to be nice. Troy Weaver, man, uh, he he's the one who went out and got uh, Russell Westbrook and Serge Ibaka. Even helped Melo uh, come to that uh, team to help them out a little bit when that stuff was going on. So, he has an eye for uh, a talent that uh, – like secret talent that you might not be able to see. So it's something that I don't I don't even care. I just know he's going to – he's going to draft somebody good, whoever it is. Uh, but Detroit Drew, what, what do you think about the Pistons getting Trey Weaver? Uh, well, he was the guy who helped get Melo to Syracuse and recruited him there. So my whole question is why didn't the Pistons recruit him in 2003 so we could have got Melo in 2003? Well, that's neither here nor there, man. We, we got uh, Darko. It's a thing in the past. You gotta leave that behind us, and hopefully, this guy can come in here and get us some good talent. Because Lord Almighty, do we need some good drafting ability? You guys can go back in time since two thousand three and look at all the names we've passed up on. Um, you know, if we get a guy who can find these dumb, diamond in the rough players, who knows our our capability of getting good people in the draft is limitless. Uh, like let's, let's use this year for example. 
really everyone's really high on Mello and Edwards. And there's a couple guys outside of those two that will be pretty solid, but no one's really hyping them up like those two guys right there. If this guy is able to go to the draft, if we get hurt in the lottery, say we fall to six or seven and is able to find a diamond in the rough again, like then we'll be sitting pretty. This is really what I wanted the Pistons to go after because it's not like we're going to go out here in free agency and sign a bunch of people that are going to come in here and change this. We'll get some role players and some guys who will probably take up some spots on the bench. It's not like we're going to get anybody in free agency that's really going to change this franchise. So if we get a guy in here who can actually draft, then we can start building around people. You know, we, we've been talking about drafting the best player available, and the last few years we've been going after position. This guy's going to go after the best player available. We'll get some nice young talent. I don't know how long this rebuild, retool thing is going to last. I mean, you're only one player away right now from changing the franchise. And, again, I don't know if it's going to be this draft, next draft, four drafts from now. I don't know. It's just going to be his responsibility to help find that guy. I'm, I'm, I'm open for it. I think it's a solid pickup. I don't really think the Pistons have anything to lose at this point right now uh, and bringing in Troy. Yeah, um, no, no doubt, no doubt. You made a lot of good points that I agree with. But uh, 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 Seiku got next. What is your opinion on the Pistons getting uh, Troy Weaver? Hey, look, I didn't think it was possible just because – Teams have been trying been trying to get this guy for years, like two or three years. He's gotten interviewed by a bunch of teams. And I remember a quote from like 2013, somewhere around there. He was talking about uh, the Pistons and the bad boy era. And uh, like, I think he's always liked the Pistons. And I'm, I couldn't be more thrilled to have him. I mean, he has an amazing drafting history. Like even when he drafted Russell Westbrook, Westbrook, like when he drafted him at four, a lot of people like didn't weren't that high on high on him at that point. And when JMO said, "I don't like," of course we I the fans who care about who they draft, but he said, "I like trust Troy Weaver to even if I don't agree with it, I trust Troy Weaver that this guy is going to be good." And I'm completely on the same boat as JMO. Right now, he got uh. I, he got the team into the playoffs. They're in a very – I mean, the Thunder have an amazing future. They have a bunch of first-round picks that he got – I mean, he helped to get. I'm not going to say he got by himself because he was working with Sam Presti, who is one of the best GMs in the league. And so that's just him learning under. You know, I mean, that's just him gaining all that knowledge from him too. So there's so much upside to him, and I don't think there's a lot of downside. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled. Right. Um, well, this is a pickup that I love personally because um, I didn't actually think we would get Trey Weaver because to me he he was the best like a uh, uh, GM candidate available. I know a lot of people wanted other people. We're talking about the most qualified guy with the best resume. It was Trey Weaver, so I assumed that there was no way that we're gonna get him. We're the Pistons, like I, Detroit in any sport. It don't matter what sport it is. We never get the number one GM candidate on, on the board. Did that actually happen? And I, I'm very, I'm very excited. I think he's gonna be a very solid GM. I, I, I'm, I'm proud of Stefanski a little bit. He, he's coming here and he, he's done some great things. And he, he put a guy in a position of, of, of power that should be very successful. And I'm excited to see what he can build because uh, Troy Weaver was a very good GM, assistant GM. You know, when he when he was in OKC and he has a, a great resume and as uh Seiko said man when you look at how good OKC is he definitely had a hand in that when they got five first round picks losing Westbrook and trading Paul George he definitely had a hand in that but all right man make sure you guys like the video if you haven't already uh Benjamin Fulf says him drafting Westbrook over Eric Gordon was a ballsy move back then Eric Gordon height was real Eric Gordon height definitely was real. No, like I said, nobody thought what, what you know uh, the Westbrook would be what he actually is. But um, we're gonna move on. So well, before we, we do real, the, real quick, Jim, I think one of the negatives that we could see from this is gonna be his relationship with Dwayne Casey. Say we get a top five. I don't pick. care. Well, hold on, just hear me out before you hop on this one. Say we get this top five pick, we get a good player, but Dwayne Casey doesn't think that he's ready to play yet, regardless if he is or if he isn't. Say it's like the next Seiku where everybody and their moms wants to see Seiku play. Even if it's just for a little bit and he spends a lot more time in the G League, then there might be tension 
uh, between our coach and our front office already with year number one or two. It's a real possibility that's going to happen. Um, I just don't know why Dwayne Casey's not playing more of the young guys. You know, like the Dwayne Casey's first year here. I know they were trying to make the playoffs, but you started a second round rookie in Bruce Brown over Luke Kennard, who was ready for that jump. Now, again, I'm a, I like Bruce Brown, but if that's the kind of thing that the GM doesn't want, at the end of the day, it should be the coach's decision on who starts, who comes off the bench, and who doesn't play. But that might be something we have to keep our eyes on moving forward. If his guy that he's supposed to be drafting, who's supposed to be the next thing for this franchise, if he's not getting the minutes that the GM wants, and the Casey's not playing him, it might be a problem. Well, I think Casey is on a shorter leash than we might think. Like he'll get his couple of years, but if something something doesn't happen in, in a couple of years, and those problems that you're talking about are happening. I mean, I can see them going in a different direction because he's not he's not there. He's not at least uh, a Troy Weaver's guy, but we'll see how that goes. Like I said, you already know what I think about with Dwayne Casey, and I'm not going to assume that he destroys the next young player we get, but it's barely I, – I actually don't think – it don't matter who we draft, Dwayne Casey wouldn't play him a lot. So it, it just, I don't think that's going to change. King, you got any thoughts on this? I don't know, man. It, I think it it depends on the caliber of the player, man. If we get if we get Melo Ball, he playing. Simple as that, man. I don't I don't think Casey is going to have somebody out somebody else out there, man. Um, it just depends on the caliber of the player to me. Uh, if the player is playing well, then Casey's going to put him out there. You know, uh, Seiko I felt like took some steps back when he ran into the wall, obviously, but. Um, you know, everybody still wanted to see him out there. I say, if he was, he was if he wasn't going to be no good, then I mean, it's no point in having him out there. I mean, players run into the wall; it happens. But if we get the right guy, like I said, a, a, a solid point guard man that's going to do something with this team, I think the way to play him, I don't think that'd be an issue. Yeah, I mean that that's that's something I'm talking about because that player is, let's say that player is ready to play, but he's not a highly touted clout level player. Let's say we draft, I don't know, man. Let's say we draft that on Ginko, on Gangu, whatever this on Gaku guy. That guy. <laughs> whatever his name is. Uh, say his name. On Yeka Okongwu. Now let's say we draft him and he's a beast, but because he's not mellow, we, we don't play him and that's how it happens. With, with our players, that could happen, but because I, I see, I could see him starting Melo or Anthony Edwards, but that's it. Killian Hayes, Cole Anthony, Obi Toppin, James Wiseman might start just because he's a center. But that's just something that we have to look at. Look, man, like I don't know what Casey's gonna do with these young guys. I, I could just sit back and watch because at the end of the day, I can't change anything. So we'll we'll see how that goes. But uh, we got Bravo in the building. We got uh, Jack Jr. 26 in the building. Yeah. All right. So, look, I'm just saying, Seku has been has been playing basketball for six years. Okay, that's not a long time. Yes, he does need to be on the floor, but when he hit that rookie wall, like I think that's just with Seku, just because he's only been playing for that certain amount of time. Like Bruce Brown, he was drafted in the second round, and Dwayne Casey played him. You know what I'm saying? So I I don't think we can assume that Dwayne Casey will just will just think that about any player he drafts. I think he was only doing that to Seku just because he wanted to go on the trip, so you can just push him into it. Is what I'm saying. I mean, you can say that if you want. <laughs> if if that's the way you, the, the way you want to interpret it, then then fine. I don't I don't have an issue with you interpreting it uh, that way. Um, ball world don't lie. Says sometimes playing a player who is not ready can hurt their confidence. But I think Seku definitely was ready to play them, and it wasn't. This is my main thing. It, who was over him? Marquise Morris and Tony Snell? Like, why isn't he on the court? Like, I don't care how bad he was playing. Tony Snell don't deserve to be on the court. No. Like, <laughs> over no rookie. Like, I'm serious. And uh, and then when you look at defensively, he definitely was needed on the Pistons. So, it's just some things that, you know, we'll never know why he did some certain things. But it is what it is, man. But we're going to move on to the next question. Um, the next question is: So now that we have Troy Weaver, who would you, uh, who do you think should be the assistant GM? Who do you want 
as the assistant GM, and do you even think the assistant GM matters now that we even have Troy Weaver? We gonna uh, start with you, King. Uh, I don't see the point of the assistant GM to be honest. Uh, just not something that I would do to be honest. Um, what would his power be? What would his input be? Or if you want to come in and groom a guy, or I mean, whatever it may be, then that's fine with me. But um. I don't even see the point of even having an assistant GM. That's my dog in the background. Excuse me, y'all. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> we gonna go to you, uh, Pistons folks. Second guy next. All right. Uh, honestly, I'm definitely with King here. I don't really feel that there is a need for assistant GM. I truly do want. Uh, Troy Weaver and Estefanski in charge of everything we're doing. Uh, so I don't think there's really a need if we're gonna groom a guy and bring one in just because why not? Like, I think I didn't want Chauncey Billups as our GM, but I feel like he would be a great assistant GM just so he could groom him for the future if somehow we let Troy Weaver get away from us in the future. But, uh, I, I honestly do not see the need for him. I, I want Troy Weaver and, uh, I want Troy Weaver and Ed in charge, so I don't, I, I don't want, uh, like decisions being taken away or de- being argued with, I guess, with an assistant GM for Troy Weaver. So I don't see the need of one. Um, okay, okay, uh, Drew, what do you think about the assistant? Well, I don't know if it's really important or not. Obviously, you want to get everyone in the front office that's going to help your team. No matter you what there position. Too? Can you hear me? Uh, no, I'm about to say I hear you now. Oh, well, I guess I'll just restart. Um, I don't know how important going after the assistant GM really is because <laughs> what is he going to do? I, I don't I don't really know how much authority he's going to have. Now, who would I like to see? Well, none other than the Palace Prince, Tayshaun Prince. We got to get, start getting some of this 04 team involved with this, you know, Big Ben is a partial owner of the Grand Rapids Drive. It's encouraging to see that. But, uh, I mean, look at, look at like, Isaiah Thomas, man. He's always at the practice facility. He's always on NBA TV or uh, when they do March Madness, when everyone leaves, he's always on uh, inside or he's on uh, NBA and TNT with Shaq and them talking about the Pistons. He's trying to hold it down. And, really, the 4 Pistons really aren't really involved with any of our players or front office people. I really want that to start changing. And, again, I think Tayshaun's a really smart dude. He's already doing stuff over in Memphis right now. Again, I'm not exactly sure how involved he was with any of their moves. Uh, But if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure he was pretty high on John Moran, as most people were. So you can't really call him a genius for that because Ja's really good. And people realized that watching the March Madness last year. But to get someone like that who can still learn – because if I'm not mistaken, as the fancy has got one year left on his contract, he might be getting out of here. And then Troy might get promoted to president of operation. And then that assistant could be promoted to GM. Again, this is all hypothetical. I don't have any facts or inside information to kind of solidify that, but it's all what if I'm in the conspiracy theories and that's my conspiracy theory. Again, I'm like I said, I don't know how important it is to go after this assistant GM, but at the same time, I want to get good people in here that can get promoted. You know, there's no point in taking a job if there's no upside to it. If you can't get promoted, if you can't level up, what's the point, you know? So, again, I don't know really any candidates I'm looking at to be an assistant outside of former Pistons. So, I'll trust whoever the Pistons bring in until they prove me wrong. Um, I, I agree with most of the things you said. I have no problem with trusting who the Pistons bring in, but I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Tayshawn Prince needs to be the assistant GM. Mm-hmm. I honestly like he needs to be the guy. Like Chauncey, uh, he, we we don't have the type of situation that he would want. He wants to be the big boss. He wants the big bucks. Well, he's not gonna get that here. Uh, according to reports, it, it hasn't been heard that uh, Tayshawn has been saying those type of things. So if Tayshawn wants the job, because we don't really know if he wants the job, he might want to stay over there with what they're building in Memphis. But if he wants the job, Tayshawn Prince should be the assistant GM. Let him learn behind Troy Reaver for multiple and multiple years. And when it's time to re-up some contracts, we'll see where, where that decision goes. But it's an interesting question from the guys in the chat. But uh, shout out to everybody in the chat. Make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to share this video. Make sure you guys like the video. 
but the question is uh, from not a Lions fan, but and uh, everybody on the panel that uh, should answer this because I think it's interesting. Could Wiseman play alongside Christian Wood and both be impactful? We gonna go with you, uh, Evan. Uh, I think 100. percent I mean, Christian Wood is a power forward. I he Christian Wood can't play center, but I view him that he is power forward and he should play power forward. And James Wiseman is a center, so I think they're two different positions and they're two really really good players. I think James Wiseman is. I mean, he's one of my favorite players. Is uh, in the whole draft class. I mean, Kira Lewis is up there too, but uh. I really do love James Wiseman. I think he's going to be an amazing player. Uh, so I think he can be impactful. I would definitely choose a point guard over him, but if Killian and LaMelo are both gone, then I think James Wiseman is a good pick. Okay, okay. Uh, everything, King, what do you think? Do you think uh, C. Wood and James Wiseman could play and play well together? Well, according to Buffed Up in the comments, uh, Wiseman is irrelevant because centers in the NBA are irrelevant. Um, I disagree, man. Yeah, Buffed Up is the king of hot takes, man. <laughs> I, I, I think I disagree, man. I think he, um, like I said, for for the, the final and last time, Christian Wood is not a center, and he will not be a center. He's not going to pack on all his muscle that people think Wood is going to be Wood. He's a power forward, and that's what he is. Um, and against certain matchups, you're going to need a, a bigger guy with a bigger frame to defend guys in the paint. Uh, as far as centers being irrelevant, man, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of centers that still left in the league for uh, my information. Um, you know, and everybody is not shooting 41% from the three point line at center. That's not happening. That's not even close. That is a myth. Uh, you have to have somebody down there who can bang and get rebounds and defend the paint. Otherwise, you're screwed. Everything is not about the perimeter. It, it is it is a more of a shooting game today, but the center is still relevant, even though they may not be as relevant as they, as they were back in the 90s and the 80s, they are still relevant. Well, I mean – of course, the center is still relevant. Uh, are we going to sit here and say the Toronto Raptors win the championship without Serge Ibaka and Merck was all playing like how they did? Absolutely. I don't think so. Yeah, that's, that's, Ser Serge Ibaka had a couple of games where he was straight looking like all oh, like he was falling, right? Like badly on them. They couldn't do that. Serge was dropping nineteen off the bench. So. And Mark Gasol was playing well too. So we we know how valuable centers are. And buffed up his his opinion is deriving from you know uh, it's a perimeter game, but James Wiseman doesn't even fit that bill because he's a uh, he's an all around center that can play defense, can score on the inside, and he can shoot. And you pair him with Christian Wood, I think it would be a, a perfect pair. It would probably send Christian Wood to the bench because you would start Wiseman and Blake Griffin, and then you have Christian Wood uh, back up Blake Griffin when Blake contract up. But no matter what we do with him. Then you start in Christian Wood at power forward with James Wiseman. Of course, we want a point guard before we get James Wiseman, but him and Christian Wood would actually be an amazing duo. I think. And him and Blake Griffin would be even better. I think James Wiseman is just a unicorn type of talent. He just got to uh, keep his head down, stay out of trouble, and he, he could develop into one of the best centers in this league, man. And uh, we, we still got centers in this league that people consider elite, like Rudy Gobert. You can't shoot a lick. So, and Rudy Go, you can't, you, we know he's very, very valuable to Utah and their uh, success. Yeah, but, and he, uh, said, uh, he also said to tell the Rockets that, well, the, Rock, the Rockets got killed in the paint. So, I mean, how much success well, did the they Rockets, have? You can't name me, what, more than like four to five teams in NBA history that's had two MVPs on the team at the same time. So, when you have two MVPs, you can do crazy stuff. Like, not have a center. Yeah, you got two superstars. But that's not normal. And we yeah. know that's not how you build a basketball team. And a like, that's not normal. Like, you had Kevin Durant and Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. All they centers were scrubs. Because you got them. You know what I'm saying? It's a little bit different. So, I think that's a little bit different. But the Rockets, that's different. They got two superstars. Like, yeah. you can do things like that. And when them two jokers have a bad shooting night, guess what? They get killed. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Bottom line says I have not saw Wiseman. He does not play with an edge. 
if you ain't playing with an edge and you dropping twenty and ten, then what's happening when you playing with an edge? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to think NBA fans like to see people screaming and yelling after they shoot every shot or something. Yeah, for real, for real. Like, hey man, I don't know about playing with an edge or nothing. But when I watched Wiseman when he was in high school, he was a monster, and he didn't play a lot in college. But yeah, he he, he proved whatever I needed to see in those four those little four or five games. He was about like, nah, I, I, I'm a I'm really high on uh, with Wiseman. We got Michael Mike in the building was good. Um, all right, so back to the uh, the next question. So. Uh, I think that the Pistons actually getting Troy Weaver was actually a big deal because, as I alluded to before, Troy Weaver, in my opinion, was no doubt the best GM prospect on the board. So my, my question to you guys is, what do you think it says about uh, about the Pistons organization that we can pull in the number one uh, – uh, we've been changing, uh, Drew? I don't. I don't understand the question. You kind of broke up there. Yeah, you did. I kind of heard him. He said, uh, "What do you think about the uh, fact that the Pistons can pull uh, basically a top-notch GM like Weaver in to the organization?" Well, it's a it's a step in the right direction. Uh, at the end of the day, we still we still got to wait to see how it's going to pan out. But it, it's what I've said about the Lions. It's what I'll say about the Pistons. In order to be good and be a championship caliber team. You have to get the people in, rather if it's players, coaches, front office, towel boys, um, Mason doing the intros. You have to get all that stuff the way you want it to be, or else you're never going to do anything. You, you know, you, you kind of seen the Pistons half ass this thing with uh, Stan Van Gundy being here. I can't believe I brought his name up on the air again, but they didn't really have a blueprint. They didn't really have a direction. Their whole goal was just to make it to the playoffs. They weren't trying to get any better, and they weren't really trying to get any worse. They were just kind of there. Now that you got a front office like this that's making moves and getting people that can uh, not think about the now, can start thinking about the future, now you have a plan, a blueprint, and a direction to go. I think it's a good step for the Pistons because now you have someone who knows who they're going to want to draft. We have to see how him and Dwayne Casey are going to work out. But in terms of Ed and Tom Gord and Casey all really saying positive things about this guy, so far it's off to a good start. It's showing that they're kind of united. And when you start bringing more people into the basketball operation scheme, you really need to be on the same page. You can have disagreements and arguments, but at the end of the day, you have to have the same thoughts, be one big train moving forward. I think it's good that the Pistons got the guy that they wanted. And to many NBA analysts and former NBA players, they all say good things about Troy. So I'm excited to see what he's going to bring to the table. And it can only mean nothing but better things for the Pistons. They certainly can't get worse. Knock on wood. <laughs> well said, well said, Drew. Uh, bought on live worldwide says, no, I'm talking about taking it to the basket. Not easy. Uh, putbacks, putting it on the floor like Toppin or even Andre. I never saw Wiseman do that. I don't know if on offense he is a dog. That's my worry. Well, Drummond was a point guard before he got tall. Um, Toppin is a power forward. I don't know if centers are required to be great dribblers. I mean, he has to play center, but uh, offense is Wiseman's best ability. So I, I don't, I don't know what he's talking about with that. But we got uh, Bravo in the building. What's good? What's good, everyone? How is everybody doing today? What's Sorry if I'm being a little bit late because of the work. But I'm all done and finished seeing all my patients. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So uh, shout out to everybody in the chat. We still will be having uh, Trady Al Hollins on. He's just running a little late, man. A lot of crazy things are going on, but we're going to keep the show going. So, probably, what do you think it says about the Pistons that they can uh, bring in uh, – Troy Weaver, who is the number one GM candidate. I think what I'm going to say, I think it's a good move, solid move for us. Uh, we The Pistons need someone like with an experience and the personnel uh, expertise like uh, Troy Weaver. He's been in the league for a while and he's been scouting for a while. And he's been with the OKC for almost like 10 years. I'm really like, he comes with an excellent resume. His resume speaks for himself. And I'm, I'm really, like, interested in him uh, to see how he is developing and he's going to really build this team. Um, I think I'm going to give credits to Ed Stefanski in here. He did 
uh, a solid move by bringing in Troy Weaver. And I, I do believe this uh, is a good thing because I, I don't know. This is just a, a move by Tom Gorish. This is a, has to be come from a guy like Ed Stefanski and, and and someone who's in charge like that. So I, I kind of like like what he what we did, and I think it's a good start for us. I don't know what happened to Jamo, but uh, yeah, what's it? <laughs> Evan, I'm gonna go ahead and pass that one to you, man. What do you think uh, this means for the Pistons? To go ahead and get their number one guy uh, to be the GM. Well, look, it's it, it's obviously a very very good sign. Just that you know this guy has been interviewed by multiple multiple teams, and he's been trying to get pried away, uh, pried away by many like for many years, probably two or three years now. And uh, he chose coming to the Pistons. I feel that's that's Stefanski, and I feel that Dwayne Casey's coming with open arms, even though Drew, you might think that they might have a problem. From what I've seen, Casey says, he said, you know, he's a really smart guy. He's really all this, that, all compliments I've seen so far. Uh, and it, it shows me a lot of good things that, a Pist that the Pistons can pull off something like this. And I, I mean, just, just at the fact that, you know, he's been interviewed by so many teams that that's just showing me some right there. And, uh, Troy Weaver, he, he has a direction. He already, he already knows what he's doing in the back of his head right now. He knows who he's going to draft. He, he knows what's going to happen. I, I mean, it's, it's great. It's, I mean, it, it just, it's a really good sign. I don't, like I said, I, mean, I don't know if they'll have a bad relationship. It's just something we got to keep our eye on. They could be, they could be a really good Batman and Robin combo. You know, mm -hmm. if he goes ahead and drafts someone that's really talented, Dwayne Casey's supposed to be a guy who helps develop younger talent. It's what he did in Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, it took him about seven, eight years to get everyone the way he wanted them to play at. Uh, but at the end of the day, when you have people like Demar Defrozen leading your team, you you ain't gonna win games uh, when it comes down to that. But if they go ahead and get some good talent. It could be a nice Batman and Robin, or to upgrade it, a Superman and Batman combination where they just kill it, you know? So, I mean, when you get someone new brought in here, you don't really know what to expect. Um, I don't think he wants to step on anybody's toes, and he seems like a pretty chill dude. I really haven't heard him say more than three words. Um, I, I don't really know if that's a good or bad thing. No, well, he just knows what he's doing. He doesn't want to share it. Hey man, he don't need to. Um, that he he don't need to shine, man. He he just need to write the checks and, and do the move behind the scenes, you know. But uh, uh, King, what do you think about this topic? What do you think it says about the uh, Pistons that we can bring in the top GM candidate? I know uh, he's not the guy that you wanted, but he's the guy that everybody else wanted. Universal. Uh, I mean, it, it, it speaks to the change, man. The change we've seen in the, the recent years with the Pistons. As far as uh, what you know, Stefanski's been doing, um, been changing a lot of the bad habits of the Pistons, man. We we pretty much self destructed this team all the way down from that uh, that 2004 Pistons team, man. Um, and I'm glad to see us going back in the right direction. You know, you got to start with your building block. So um, I think it speaks to change, man. It's, it's a change in the organization. We do still have a, a, a I don't even know what to call Tom Gores. But um, as long as these guys got the keys, man, I'm I'm good with that. I call it Tom Gore's Detroit Drew knockoff. He likes to drink, but that's all he does. Yeah, I was about to say, my thing about Tom Gore is, like, we don't know what to do with Tom Gore's, but to me, Tom Gore's is a businessman, and he's about making money, and he realizes that if I want to make money, I need to put people in position that can do the things that I can't do that are good at their job, and that's what he's done. That's the only thing you can give him credit for because, I mean, that's what an owner is supposed to do at the end of the day, right? And I think that uh, the fact that we got Troy Weaver, like I said, I thought it was literally impossible. I'm like, there's no way we're going to get this guy because he was way too qualified. And uh, Estefanski has done a lot changing the, the culture uh, little by little. It hasn't been drastic, but it's been little by little fixing the uh, cap space. I mean, whether we like getting rid of Drummond or not, they decided to do that. We'll see what happens with uh, Blake Griffin, but uh, things have been changing, and we've been a, we're we're in a good situation as a team from a, a cap and building and talent perspective. That a guy like Troy Weaver will want to come in and be the GM, get his opportunity, and see what he can do. Because uh, I just think it's very uh, valuable that we continue to grow as an organization. Because end of the day, we got to attract free agents. And I think 
becoming a playoff team and uh, changing the culture a bit with, with things that we do uh, could uh, could matter a lot. So we got uh, <laughs> uh, Bald on Online says he is not the guy we wanted. He is the one we needed. Uh, I agree. I agree. I agree with you there. Jack Junior twenty six says Gores is a self made billionaire. Enough said. A hey, low key enough said. Self made billionaire is smart. He, he you know he he can party, but he know he knows what to do. I have to say, man. Our last owner, you know, ups and downs with them, but Tom Gores is – he's done all right, at least. He got rid of SVG, which he should have been did, and uh, he, he's been doing all right since. So we'll see if, what he continues to do. But, he's pretty right. good at throwing T-shirts, too. Don't don't forget to throw yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, but, you know what's funny? Like, like, and I know, like, Tom Gores is not <laughs> – he just like to me on the on the side. He kind of represents like parts of the city, man. The way he the way he be clowning, man. It just it's just fun, man. Mm-hmm. Like this is what he needs. I'm it's not a, I'm not letting him off the hook that easy. <laughs> Tom Gores is, is, a, is a, a smart idiot, is what he is. Yeah, he's a, a drunk hey, man, but that's and, what uh, you need, bro. You need every enough. every owner in the NBA has money. Money has nothing to do with it. Um, every NFL owner has money. If you mm-hmm. are an idiot, you're an idiot, and he's an mm-hmm. idiot. <laughs> so, as the fans can get all the credit to, from me, Tom Gores is a complete, utter drunken fool. Yes, dilly dilly. Hey man, even an idiot can be can be right, man. Every like you see, <laughs> or get lucky. A great idiot, you know what you are. Be like, you know, I ain't even good at this. You do it. So, and then you know, I'm gonna just go party all day. See, it works, man. Because I. I'm not going to uh, – we don't have to give him the most credit, but I'm not going to say that I believe that another GM would have us in the same situation. I really don't – I mean, not GM owner. I really don't know that because ownership has been in question for a while with the whole Joe Dumar situation, but it, it is what it is. Now, now that things have changed, we heard Blake Griffin said uh, he's willing to do anything for the organization. And as we've seen, I mean – the man played on one leg and he didn't really have to. So I, I believe him in that situation. But now now looking back on things that changed in the Blake Griffin trade, what are your thoughts on the uh, Blake, Tri- Blake Griffin trade now? And uh, would you consider uh, keeping Blake if he was willing to uh, take a, a cheap, cheap deal to stay on the team? I don't know if he's willing to do that, but we're going to see. We're going to start with you, Bravo. What was the uh, what is the what is what do I think if we trade Blake Griffin right now? No, I said, what do you think about the Blake Griffin trade? So, I mean, do, do you want us? To, I, I, I still didn't understand the question. Oh, really, he's asking like right now, looking back at it, what are your thoughts on the trade? Because it's been what? Oh, retrospectively, how, now? how do you how do you look at the trade retrospectively? Right? Yeah. Yeah, in retrospective way, I think it was a bad move. <laughs> the bottom line, because we lost a first round pick, we lost a young player in Tobias Harris, who is he was probably going to make an all star maybe once at least. And uh, we got Blake, who's thirty one right now, and he's injury prone. We got actually one great season of a Blake Griffin, which was great, and he took us to the playoff. But is that good enough? No, I don't think so. So. It's really hard to look at things retrospectively some, sometimes because this is how, oh, what have happened if we did this? What have happened if we did that? Uh, at the end of the day, I think it's a move. It wasn't a good move. But at the same time, we got Blake. Now, how, how do we look at him right now? Is he a tradable asset? I really don't see it. You know, the only thing we can see him a tradable asset is if he comes back and ball. That's the only way. And uh, it's really hard to get off that contract. I mean, I was li- listening to another podcast of the uh, uh, on, on the NBA. They're talking about who's the worst NBA contract right now. It, it might be not just Blake Griffin. I mean, it, I know they're sta- they're saying uh, John Wall is one of the worst NBA contract, but I say, and actually, it's interesting to hear that Blake Griffin is one of the worst contracts because because he didn't really play. They don't think that he has a good chance of coming back. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how he does with his knee rehab. If he comes back at least close to what he is in 2018, 2019 season, that will be interesting. But if it's not, we probably like we lost a lot in that trade because I don't see – it's really hard to imagine Blake Griffin coming back like like the way he is. So uh, it, it, that's how I'm my impression of, of the of this current – of the previous trade for Blake Griffin. Um. 
I think Blake can come back at what he is only because of when he was completely hurt, <laughs> completely, and shouldn't have been on the court, he's still giving you 18. So that means if he's healthy, he should still be able to give you 20. But uh, I'm not yet like them. I'm not concerned about whether Blake will come back healthy. He's had so much time off, I think it'll be good for him. But on, on looking back in hindsight with the trade, uh, all I'm going to say is it's something that Sam Van Gundy decided to go do. And it, it was necessary to a point. I mean, we, we gave up Tobias Harris, but Tobias Harris was about to get a contract similar to Blake's. I mean, you got players like Drew Holiday getting paid $30 million a year. So when I look at stuff like that, I don't know. I mean, the contract isn't good. I'm, I like it. But uh, I, don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know uh, what's going to go on with that. But then you lost the uh, shot deal with Alexander. But I don't trust the Pistons. I don't think the Pistons would have took him. I'm going to be honest with y'all. We, we would have passed on him and Michael Porter Jr. and took the one player we weren't supposed to. So I'm not convinced that we would have actually taken shot deal with Alexander. I'm not convinced at all because he technically is a shooting guard. And you could say we didn't need a shooting guard at the point that when we drafted him because you had Bruce Brown and – uh, Kyrie and uh, Luke Kennard and Langston Galloway. So we'll we'll see how it goes on with that. But it, it's considering that uh, obviously Blake is way better than Tobias is, and Tobias is about to have a similar contract. And we we see what he is. He's a scorer, and he he's nothing. He's not much else. He can't really elevate a team, but he he can score the ball. That's what he's good at. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, Drew, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, the Blake trade? Uh, looking back. Well, it was it was never a move for the future. Stan Van Gundy was on his last leg. Um, <laughs> he made it to try to save yeah. his job, and that's really what it boils down to. Give up Tobias, which I'm not mad for moving up Tobias because Tobias was due for a pay grade, and we were all questioning if we should pay him or not because even though he puts up a lot of points, he is he gives them all up on defense. So I mean, I'm not mad moving on from Tobias. Tobias is a great player. He's just not a good number one option. He's good for a third option, second option type deal anyway. Uh, looking back at the pick, I, that's the thing I regret the most because now that dude who we, we didn't draft is now an OKC, averaging almost 20 points per game, and OKC is, is going to sit pretty good with him. You know, I just I like Blake Griffin. I do. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the Pistons got him at the same time. That makes sense because everything this dude has said – is exactly what you want to start a player to say. Um, but the trade is its not a good trade. It's its really not. It, it really hurt us. Now we have to wait for Blake Griffin's contract to kind of go off the books because no one wants him right now because he's injury prone and no one wants to take that kind of money uh, for a guy who's never going to play. You know, it's, it's the kind of the equivalent to a Charlie V, Ben Gordon, but he's way better than both of those guys. But no one wanted to take those guys because, for one, they suck. And we paid him way too much money. Again, I'm not saying Blake sucks, but you can't keep giving these contracts out to people who aren't going to be there, who aren't going to be reliable to you. Again, we didn't we didn't give him that kind of money, but we traded for that contract. And again, it was just a move for Stan to try to save his job. You know, I don't I don't know if Ed Stefanski and Dwayne Casey was here. If they would have pulled the trigger on that, I doubt it. They're just trying to make it work. And I think the best option for the Pistons right now is to hope he comes back healthy. And has a great first half of the year. And then around the all-star break, when the trades start picking up, then you can start to look to move them. But for right now, if you're going to trade them, you ain't going to get nearly enough of what you give up for them. You probably aren't going to get a first. You probably aren't going to get a young player. You'll probably get some expiring deals to balance out the books. But that's about it. You're not going to get a good pick in return. You're not going to get a superstar in return. I, I think the Pistons are kind of handicapped, no pun intended, with Blake Griffin right now. I I don't I don't know um, I don't know if the market is as bad for like Charlie V or even Andre. I think you can could get a good player for Blake, like for real. It just depends on the team that you're trading with. But uh, it's just like you you ask yourself, Stan Van Gundy, like what were you thinking? Like what were you like? Okay, if you want to go get Blake, cool, go get him. But why give up Avery and Boban? Like really, and every like I said, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not convinced that the Pistons would have taken Shy Gillis Alexander. I'm almost confident we would have, we wouldn't have taken him. But regardless of that, you know, we'll we'll see how it is. Uh, but uh, everything, can you looking back on the uh, Blake Griffin trade? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm sure y'all want to ask me this. 
It's free smoke Saturday. And I, I really like not the guy. I'm hearing a lot of I'm being nice because I'm a Pistons fan going on right now. It was the dumbest damn trade in the league. Excuse my language. Um, and we were the only stupid team to to accept the trade. Nobody else would have shot themselves in the foot like that but the Detroit Pistons and Stan Van Gundy because, yes, the idiot was trying to save his job. Stan Van Gundy has, I mean, mutilated this team. What he left behind is haunting us right now. It is no way you take that contract. This man has a history of getting injured at the most important times of the season with the worst contract in the league. What in your right mind would make you trade for that and then trade who you traded for and then take a contract that lasts that long? This dude is about to make so much freaking money. Man, listen. My blood is starting to boil talking about this too, man. It, it, it's listen, Blake. I mean, Griffin, but look, 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 you gotta think about cute. the little fifty point game. The worst uh, that was cute, you know, the little fifty point game stuff. That all was cute. Yeah, you know, whoop de do. I'm not sold by that <laughs> at all. At all. He did exactly, exactly what I said he was gonna do the very first day that he got here. He got to the playoffs and he got injured. It happens. You are an athletic player, and Blake Griffin, you made a career off being an athletic player. Athletic player knees do not dra- dra- dramatic- dra- dramatically come back. That doesn't happen. He's not going to ever be the player that he used to be. He's going to be this stink that we have right now. And that's just the flat-out truth. I'm not being a Pistons fan right now. I'm being a basketball fan right now. If I was from any other franchise, just like all the fans were from all the other franchises, I would laugh at the Pistons still today. It was stupid, and it's going to continue to be stupid until he get out of here. Well, I tried to, you know, wait for a while before King went on because we all know he, he never fanned of Blake being here. But uh, that was fun. Um, anyway, <laughs> we got Noah's in the building. What's good, Noah? Uh, what's up? Look like that. I just walked in some, some mess in my shoes. Uh, what's up, everybody? <laughs> what's going on, man? I, uh, it's hey, all good. Hey, man. Hey, well, what, the question is about Blake's contract being kind of a uh, mess, and was no, that a bad no, move? No, the question was, uh, what do you think about the trade? Now, looking back. What I think about the trade looking back? Uh, Obviously, it was horrible. I mean, let's be honest. The only reason why we were losing before we made that trade was because we didn't have our starting point guard, literally. Uh, that was kind of a panic mood. The only person that should have been traded at the time was Avery Bradley because he was not producing anything. Uh, that was a bad uh, sign. I mean, trade for them to give up Marcus Morris in the first place. And then now it will end up happening. Y'all know I made several rage videos about that. The point is, the Pistons just had needed a point guard. I think it was a panic move by Stan Van Gundy. Yeah, Blake fed the system that Stan Van Gundy was running, but not what Dwayne Casey is trying to do. Uh, I hope Dwayne Casey is uh, honest when he says this is an experiment because it's going bad. I'm not taking anything away Blake has done, but that I would have rather you just waited on Tobias Harris and kept him here and just kind of like waited to another team that was really pushing in high ranks with playoffs and give us something for him. In that case, if we had to get rid of Tobias Harris, you know, that way we don't have to pay him and we get something for him versus trading him for a risky player like Blake Griffin. And that, that, that's kind of the way I go about it. I mean, yeah, when I look at the science about it, I can understand why they would want Blake Griffin because he was a media fit for that pick and roll system that Sam Van Gundy uh, liked it. And even after that, you saw how well the pick and roll would work for Blake and Drummond when they were here, but that came with a price. So I say that was a bad trade. On the line of, I understand where they were going, but I'm, I don't really like it. Yeah, uh, no doubt, no doubt. So, um, every week, as you guys know, we do a draft profile on the player, and uh, this week is uh, my main man, Killian Hayes. We've talked about Killian Hayes a lot on the show, but not not uh, extensively as a prospect. So, we we gonna look into uh, Killian Hayes today. So, uh. Bravo, man. Um, let, let's get your slide up and let, let's show the people 
people about uh, Killian Hayes and what he can bring to the table and what he can uh, bring to the Pistons. Yes, uh, so I'll uh, let you guys know about Killian Hayes. So uh, one of my favorite top choices for this NBA draft, he is probably the third on my mock draft uh, for the Detroit Pistons. And uh, my favorite player is, I'm going to say straightforward, is LaMelo Ball. Then comes Anthony Edwards, and then comes this guy. Um, I think this is this this is the guy we should go after if we don't land a top pick. This is really my favorite guy. So, so Killian Hayes, he's a French international. He plays for the uh, KLM uh, league in the, in the Germany in the, for, for that team in the Germany German league. But he's a French international. He's actually from Florida. He's born in Florida. He speaks uh, Native American pretty good, English American very good. Six foot five, 187, 190 pounds. He's still 18 year old. He is uh, about to be 19, like about in a few more months. He plays a point guard and he also can play a shooting guard. That's what I was interested about him. Uh, he's uh, making points about he's averaging 11 points from six in only 24 games. And then at 24 minutes, sorry, 11 points in only 24 minutes. And he's projected to be averaging 15 to 16 points in a 36-minute game. He's, he's making 5.4 steals, but his projection is higher. He's making about, possibly can make about 7, 8 steal, uh, assists, which is really good. Averaging 4 rebounds. He's, he's, uh, his also stats, he's, he's scoring really impressive, 48% from the field. And uh, a relatively low uh, th- uh, three-point percentage is about 30%. He actually dropped his three-point percentage at the end of last year uh, in the German League. Um, he's a really an impressive also free-throw shooter. He's only 87. He's an 87% free-throw shooter for a rookie, his 18-year-old. That's really good. Uh, I really like this guy because he is an elite pick and roll uh, player out of this draft, in my opinion. I think he might be the best pick and roll player in the draft. He his shots, he, he his about th- about forty percent of his shots. I'm just giving you some stats in here. Forty percent of his shots come come off the dribble, and when he plays it off a pick and roll or off a three point shot, which is kind of an interesting thing. And uh, he he has this guy has a vision. He can pass the ball. He has the capacity to make a play. You'd be amazed how kind of a like interesting playmaker he is compared to like guys like even in his in his current NBA draft, which is Tyrese Halliburton and Lamella Ball. I think he is the third best playmaker on this draft. Uh, he he has a nice step back uh, and, and and he can make a shot of a, of a dribble at, at the same time. He can shoot off a step back just like. A player, I'm going to compare him to D'Angelo Russell. He has that James Harden, D'Angelo Russell stab back. He's a lefty guy. He plays with the left hand, and he, he had an amazing feel for the game. Uh, that's how I, I'm interested about him. Uh, what few cons about him only, I, I don't see many, actually. He, he only likes to go mostly left. So the, that's kind of a weakness for him, I noticed. But when he goes to the, to, to the lane, he tends to go left. He doesn't really go right because he's a lefty, it looks like it. He, he, he made some a lot of turnovers. He's about assist to turnover ratio is like three, which is relatively high. Uh, um, but he still, he still can make the assist. Uh, some questions about his quickness rather than strength, actually, in my opinion. He doesn't have that explosiveness that like um, LaMelo Ball or maybe uh, Anthony Edwards definitely have. But the guy is, is deadly in the pick and roll, I can tell you that. And he, he's a really solid mid-range uh, jumper player also. He makes a lot of his uh, points of a mid-range jumper, and he's a really good potential scorer. Comparison, again, D'Angelo Russell. I've seen him a lot of people, a lot of mock drafts comparing him to D'Angelo Russell. I've seen other interesting drafts comparing him to Spencer Dinwiddie and Kirk Heinrich. If you guys remember, Kirk Heinrich was a point guard of a Chicago Bulls in the past. Uh, I think so, but uh, could he become an impactful player? That's the biggest question for me. Killian Haynes is like a Sekou Dumbuya. He's a best friend with Sekou. And he's French. He speaks French and he speaks American. But the point is, I'm questioning only one thing about this guy in the draft, whether he can make an impact for the Detroit Pistons when he starts coming in and to play for us. I doubt that he's going to make an impact right away, just like LaMelo Ball or Anthony Edward or even Cole Anthony would come and make an impact immediately into the into the league. But I still think he's an amazing pick for us. I think he is in my top three candidate. 
and uh, I think if he comes for us, we'll be very lucky to have a guy like him. He's just like a friend with Seiko, and I think it will be a nice uh, celebration here for French celebration. You know, it'll, it'll be interesting to see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, as you guys just heard it, you heard the extensive classic draft breakdown as usual, man. But uh, <laughs> that's what he thinks about uh, Killian Hayes. But uh, it looks like we got our uh, special guest, Tradion Hollick, on the show. What's good, man? Thank you for joining us. What's up? Thanks for having me. All right, all right. Uh, go ahead, say who we got next. Uh, about the question or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so basically, I... Killian Hayes is, I would say, probably the no, second. No, best. no, 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 no. Oh, no. nah, bro. All right, I got you. I got you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, Tradion, what was your relationship like with Donnie Tindall? What was he like as a person? Uh, Donnie is a great guy. Um, he a hard nosed coach, so you know everybody have growing pains, but for the most part, um, he he was a players coach, meaning. Like he um, he related to a lot of the things that we did and how he went his approach to everything. So I like Donnie. So uh, I wanted to ask you because uh, I know everybody got a uh, they got a certain story, man. Why why do you love basketball, man? Why do you love the hoop? Why do I love basketball? Yeah, man. How how you get into it, man? Uh, I love basketball because it's an escape. Like it's, it's it's a way that I can just express everything. Um, like me, I'm known for defense, and a lot of the time I got a lot of stuff to 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 let out. So I go out there, I get to be aggressive, put my hands on guys, and just be me. So yeah, that's why I love it. No man, I, I definitely feel I definitely feel you on that, man. So I wanted to ask you. Uh, where did you get your passing gift? Was it like a gift or was it something, something you had to work on? But, you know, certain players, you can develop the ability to be able to play mate, and then certain guys, they just born with it. Like, what was that like for you? Um, I would say, like, it, like, I'm a product of my environment. So, like, everybody around me, like, in our group, I feel like can pass and, like, got a good feel for the game. So, like, when you see, like, when you see, what, what you see on the court is just my youth and, perfected my craft for real uh like i don't know i just I, it, it i can't say it's natural because we worked on it and stuff but like some is god given no man no i feel you man i'm from detroit i grew up hooping everybody had to be skilled at everything so i know exactly what you're saying man. um but uh drew you got a question for hollins man so Watching you play, because I watched a lot of drive games this year, because the Pistons, quite frankly, man, they lost me halfway through the year when they started not doing so well. So got an opportunity to watch a lot of you guys play down there. And one of my things that stood out from you, man, is you know how to get in the passing lanes. So my question is, who did you watch? Because a lot of guys now, they don't have that effort or that drive to be good defensively, and you are one of the better defenders I have seen play down there. Did you like watch someone like Gary Payton? Because Gary Payton, they called him the glove because of all the steals he got. Who was somebody like your inspirations to get that good defensively? Uh, I can't. I, I, I'm not a liar. I can't say that I've watched a lot of Gary Payton or defensive highlights. My whole thing was I I wanted to score. Like I'm, it's, it's obvious I'm not the I'm not the most skilled, but like I know I know my niche and I can star in my role. So you know. If I if I wanted to score, I had to I had to get a steal. I had to make some type of play. And 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 that was that was it. I, I took I took what my role was on, on the team on my team in high school, and just kept kept pushing and trying to perfect my craft. Noam, you got a question for him? Yes. Uh, how you doing, man? I want to know something. Uh, do you believe that to get more opportunity in the G League that? Most guys should come out and play defense more often, or do you think that's something that coaches really don't uh, determine based off who gets more opportunity? Uh, I feel like your opportunity really depends on your situation because you know it's the NBA. You, like everybody don't need everything. No matter, like you can be the best player, but if you don't fit what the NBA needs, you're not gonna get picked up. So like your opportunity just comes from really starting your role being the best you can be, you know what I mean? Like, 
somebody going to see you regardless of how you're doing. So I just feel like my time going to come, especially if I just keep doing and keep making making noise, keep winning games because everybody want to want a winner. Everybody love a winner. So um, definitely that's that's my, my blueprint. Control what you can control. All right. Control. Uh, what you say? I said control what you can control. Go ahead, Numbers. Oh. oh, okay, yeah. Oh, but everybody in the chat that doesn't know, we got a Grand Rapids drive player, Trey Deion Hollins, man, average eight assists, lead. Jamo, you're breaking up. Hey, I'll, go ahead, I'll, I'll go ahead and ask this while my Jamo's getting reconnected there. Watching the drive no, play, back, man, it, oh, you good? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to ask you about your, uh, your 18 assist game. I just want to ask – how how did that happen? Man, my teammates was making shots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, assists are helpers. I, I couldn't get them. I couldn't get all those assists without them guys putting the ball in the hole. Um, I threw some bad passes. I threw some good passes. But without them actually uh, being ready to score, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So I, uh, I get that to them for real. I appreciate them. Uh, were you were you surprised? Like, were you surprised by it when you looked at the stat sheet that you y'all did that? Because I mean, I was happy because we blew off Chicago anyway. So you know, I'm already like, hey, I'm with it. So you know, <laughs> well, I, I I can't say I was shocked because like like it's realistic. Like you in the game, like dang, I got a couple assists, and then like my teammates start saying, oh, get twenty. So I like, I didn't know where where I was, but once they start saying do this and do that, like you know, I'm just out there. Lost in, lost in the sauce. So, yeah, I can't say that I was surprised, but I, I, I definitely was grateful about it. No, man, it's very impressive, man. I'm glad you got that record, man. I, I'm sure you could do that again, too. It wasn't a fluke. But go ahead, Drew. So, watching watching the drive, man, it's like one of the few, like, G League teams that seem to be together, like, as a unit, man. What's, what's the brotherhood like down there, man? Oh, man. It's crazy because everything is so family oriented. And it's weird because we all meeting each other a few months ago. So like, uh, we all got a connection. You know, we all understand the grind and where we trying to go. Then it's like we all got that respect for each other because we all know that everybody can can play. So we got to come out there ready to play and uh, respecting what we do. If not, the next man up and he ready to go. So uh, it was like uh, when Dante Hall got that two way contract, got called up to the Pistons, man. It's like the whole yeah. locker room was so happy for him. So I love to see stuff like that, man. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, what was that? I'm sorry. Yes, I can go. Has, uh, okay, go, King. Go for it, King. Simple okay. question. Um, has Ben Wallace ever popped in on practices with you guys? Uh, yeah, Ben Wallace be around a lot, though. Uh, yeah, he has. Uh, he talked to the team. He, yeah, he's been around. Yeah, definitely. Hey, Tredion, how's it going, man? That's nice to nice meet you in here in our show. Welcome back. First time we've seen you here. We're very pleased to have you on our show. I appreciate y'all for having me, man. So uh, I, I, I really had a question, one question for me. I mean, I really see you, like, play, like, that kind of, kind of style who make – who likes to make dishes, you like to pass the ball, and at the same time, like to make a lot of steals. What kind of players inspires you the most to be like him? Which kind of players you kind of compare him, compare your style of play to? Uh, I will compare myself uh, right now to, I would say, a more defensive Mike Conley or a better passing Patrick Beverly. Cool. Okay. Um, but I, uh, my favorite player is Chris Paul. I can, I'm, you know, like that's my favorite player all the time. So like, I can't say I model my game after anybody. Like I said, I know who I am. You know, I believe in me, and I just go out there and whatever, whatever needs to be done, I'm trying to do. Nice, so. man. All right, uh, Seiko, you had a question, man. Uh, yeah. So what is it like, you know, seeing your teammates get called up Jordan Bone, Seku, Dante Hall, Lewis King, people like that. Like, what's it like just seeing and experiencing that? It's wild. It's wild just because like you see, like you see them at the beginning of the year before all of that and like what they're trying to do. And you like, you have personal conversations and, and, and hear about their background and what they do. And then when you finally see, you know, like they're, they're, they're there 
and they're they're in, they didn't chase their dream and got to that point. It's it's a good feeling. It's it's almost like I'm there, even though you know I'm not. I'm not, but it's it's one and the same because like when you when you down here, it's a, it's night and day from the NBA. You know what I mean? So when you down here and you get to finally break through that door and bust through that wall, you can't do nothing but be happy for somebody. Yeah, man, I like that. I like that. I wanted to um ask you, uh, what do you think you need to uh work on? Ah, oh, it's it's in it's, it's my jump shot, man. Like that's 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 what it is this year. That's why I've been focused on, um, trying to trying to perfect my perfect that, trying to get that. Last year was more of a get it out there, like don't be scared to shoot thing. You know what I mean? You can't be scared. You miss all the shots you don't shoot. So like that's what that's what that was. And this year, shoot, it's all about recognition and shooting all the shooting the good shots. So that like, that's my that's my that's my thing. Oh yeah, man. I definitely, uh, definitely agree with that. Uh, Kenny, you got a question, man? Um, I had jumped in a little bit late, y'all. So if I repeat something, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> but yeah, no, I just meant them those, those, those hands, man. My man is thefty. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> uh, where were you? You <laughs> real thefty, man? Uh, do you practice? Is that like a, a key thing that you practice? Well, uh, I, I can't say I practice that but like over the years i picked up little things that help like like my concentration or hand eye coordination you know what i mean i i stay with a tennis ball or little like little bitty balls or something just to if i can maneuver with those then i can do anything with an nba basketball you know what i mean so like i don't know it's little things that like that i can't necessarily practice on stealing because like i told you i'm trying to perfect my jump shot <laughs> so like i go in there and dribble a tennis ball and that seeing that little ball bounce and come back up to my hand, that that does me wonders. Uh, all right, so I want to ask, um, with the pandemic and everything that's been going on, how much basketball have you actually been able to play to work on your game? Because like we've been in the house. Yeah, more, more, uh, more of, uh, more as of late, just because of everything is coming. But mm -hmm. before it was all out outside and quarantine workouts you know what i mean so it's been a grind i don't got the beaches in my backyard or nothing but i can get it out the mud right now i'm sure you thought i uh, made a, a way to make it work i just know it's crazy to have to like you got to train and be you still got to be on the top of your game while there's a whole pandemic going on definitely man definitely <laughs> but uh all right uh drew you got a question man so you talk about CP3 being one of your favorite players. Do you have yeah. your own banana boat crew? Uh, uh kind of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can say that. Yeah. Uh, ben Moore, Jalen Hornby, and Steph Hick, them my guys. Like we done built this little relationship. Whether we have to showcase or. Just about to play each other, we find a way to go eat dinner or something. So, I, I yeah, no, that's my little crew right there as far as the basketball world. All right, so uh, you played in college and you played in the G League. What's the main main difference from like coaching perspective and then a talent perspective and then a competition perspective? Like, what's the main difference between like G League and college? Because uh, some players coming out of high school they can go to either one. Yeah. Nah. That's, that's, that's different. Um, yeah. I would say, obviously, the the talent level, um, the the rules is different. Like uh, it's more space and stuff with the NBA. The guys are bigger, faster, and like it, that 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 thing separates it. But my whole thing is, is basketball. Regardless of how we want to look at it, um, you got to put the whole the ball in the hole. And you got to score more points than other people. It just the it just. A little bit things change, but everything else is the same. You got the same base. So, uh, since you're a player in the G League, what do you think about the G League being like way more open than it than it used to be? You think that makes it easier for you or no? Uh, it it, it just depends. Like I say, like uh, it, the situation got to be right. Um, the the need, like it, it just it, it just depends for real. I can't say it makes it better just because two-way contracts and every year there's a different set of point guards and a different set of kids from overseas and stuff coming so 
it's never going to be easy or a better fit. I just got to, I got to filter it the best way possible to make, to show myself. Right. It's always going to be new competition regardless. I feel you. I feel you. But uh, no, Miss, man, you got something? Yes. Uh, back on the whole Ben Wallace question, what are the things that he told you as far as advice goes? I, I said it one more time. I didn't hear the last part. Like, what are the type of – what kind of advice have he given you and a lot of other players in uh in that locker room, man, that y'all uh, – Ben Wallace and something like that? Uh, to me, like everybody' perspective is different, but when I when I when I look at Ben or, or or try to digest the things that he said, it's mainly about taking care of what you got to take care of. Like he like he a he a loose dude, but he's straight laced. Like he he comes serious, you know what I mean? Like he not there to BS, and I feel like that rub off on us. Like he a he a hard nosed defensive dude that got out the mud. He from Alabama, that don't get no like he 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 gritty, you know what I mean? And like that energy rubs off and how he his approach to everything rubs off and I feel like I take that the most I'm more of a eye type I, I can't tell you oh he's like this and that but as far as his approach and how he he approach us I I haven't seen nobody better in that role for the for the G League Hey man, I, I like what you said because uh, we some people we ain't never. I mean, I met him before, but like we don't know Ben. But what you said is how we all feel when you're talking about his aura and the way he carry himself because like Definitely. where he's from. But uh, everybody, uh, everything King had to go out for work. You know, we still got to get that paycheck, so we got Bravo back in the <laughs> building. But uh, Damn. hey man, we you know we got to do it, man. You got to stay working, <laughs> man. But, uh, hey, Bravo, you got another question, bro? Yeah, Tradion. So what is your uh, – I mean, I see you play. And uh, in terms of uh, summer, this is a long season quarantine coming ahead. Yeah. And what is your plan for the summer, man? Man, I keep working. Pour it all into myself. Like, I know I know what I got to do to get to where I'm trying to go. And I feel like myself is the only thing keeping me from it. So, like, if I can – I can't be scared of myself now. So, like, it's, it's time, I feel like. Yeah, um, I'm sure you know this already, but and like keep doing what you're doing, you're gonna go. But like if you if you get an 18 assist in the game and you leading the league and steals like you've been doing, you can only go up from there, man, and be and try to be that Patrick Beverly but a better passer. Uh, you you can do that, you just gotta keep grinding. But uh say no, no, this is gonna need you, man. We were terrible, man. Bro, like if I man, I did not know you was averaging eight assists. If I, if, if I knew you was averaging eight, I thought it was like six. I'm like, I would have been calling for you to come up. We don't got no passes, no offense to anybody on the squad now. We don't got no passes on the squad. <laughs> hey, no man. offense to nobody watching. The, we don't I'm got just no a little role player. Squad. That's all it is. Like I ain't got the big name, or you know, I don't pass the eye test. I'm just a role player that get the job done. So like you gotta, you gotta really like basketball to know that I'm good at it. Like you're not gonna look at me and be like, "Oh, that guy can play." You, like you gotta be at the game and and just be a fan of it to know. That's that's all. Uh, I got but see, uh, that's why I say you got next. Uh, uh, help us bring you on because we we do recognize stuff like that. And um, I mean, you did get like you played like 24 minutes, so you you was out there, man, do, doing your thing. But uh, say cool, you got yeah, play. but like. Like that's the thing though. It started when when JB got to go up. You know what I mean? Before that, if you look at the, at the, at the beginning, that on the phone, bro. Uh, but if you look at the beginning of it, I was really like a spot guy when he got tired. You know what I mean? So like, when I got my opportunity once he got his opportunity, and then it's like you got to find a way now. So like that's like that's why I'm saying it's about fit situation and fit because if if the the pissing never gave. JB opportunity, I'd have never got my opportunity because you can only do so much with three minutes. It's so much time breaks and timeouts, and it's so much that my three minutes are gonna go fast. I'm gonna be sitting back down before I even start sweating. Yeah, and um, I don't think a lot of like regular people realize like how much of a grind and like how hard it is. I'm not saying that like I'm in it, but I know because yeah. I know people. And like, bro, it's hard to just go out there and then people they judge you so harshly when you only out there for a few minutes. So it's good when you can finally get the opportunity to actually show like, what you're capable of. But uh, uh, say who got next? Go ahead, man. All right. So, uh, how did you like overcome the things that you had to go through? You know, you had a transfer. You got uh, dismissed from your basketball team for uh, you know reasons so uh how did you overcome that like what helped you through that to those times i guess um, just me being a man about it i wasn't somebody that tried to blame my choices or 
the situation that I was in on somebody else. I, I took it on the chin, I accepted it, and then I moved forward. I didn't, I didn't, I can't, I don't know, pussy put around, I can't say that, but like, I didn't, I wasn't soft about it. So, like, I just, I, whatever I went through, I went through it, and I, I, I ended it once, once it went, I didn't let nothing linger. So, like, that's, that's just my approach to everything in my life. Hey, uh, I think uh, your mic was like kind of low. Hello. Could you hear me? Oh yeah, yeah, there yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we hear you now. Mm-hmm. But uh, go ahead. Dude. So I asked Craig Sword this when he came on our show. I think I'm gonna oh, ask him if it comes on the show. I have to say, man, the Drive have some of the coldest jerseys in the pros, G League, whatever. <laughs> I'm from Flint, so when they pull out the Tropics jerseys, man, I had to pull one, bro. So what are, what are your favorite jerseys that you get to wear, man? Even if it's not the drive, like all time jersey. My all, my all time, okay. I'm gonna give y'all two because I liked it. We had the the we the played when we played Washington. Uh, we played the um, the Washington Wizards G League team. That that color I can't I can't think of the color it was. Not good with colors. And then I had a jersey. I had the SpongeBob uniform uh, for the Madden that I like. I'm not even a big. Uh, cartoon guy, but like the uniform was nice. How they did the thought process of that. So those two. Uh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, so my question is, what what's the practice and preparation like for you know the, the process goes through the week for like practice and preparation for like every game I play? Uh, we really went hard the the week. You know what I mean? It wasn't no, it wasn't no playing with us, especially early on. It, it, he started to take some off of it, or take the practice down some. Um, the further the season went on, but for the most part, um, the only day that we really didn't go was game day or a travel day, and then we have like a little walk through then. But besides that, like I said, we had 14, 13, 14, 15 guys on the team, and we all was competitive, and I feel like all of us when our time came, produced. Mm. <laughs> so, like, we was ready it just on how the situation was. So, practice was competitive. No, I, you know, I know it's competitive because uh, – and as a Pistons fan, it makes me upset because I, as a fan, we need point guards, but we have, like, 12 point guards on the G League team. And we're like, <laughs> when we going to bring somebody else to actually help us out? But uh, everybody in the chat, man, it's crazy. Like, it's crazy because Craig Swords, he's a point guard too, so I know the competition. But like it's crazy mm-hmm. how many guards that we we bring in. We got uh back there, but uh for everybody in the chat, we got Tradion Hollins on. If you have uh, any questions for him, make sure that you drop it on uh in the chat. So uh, anybody else got a question? Yeah, uh, so Tradion. So uh, I see that you're a big family guy. Uh, tell us more about yeah. your, your personal life. <laughs> uh yeah, I have a I have a daughter. A All right. We getting her food. <laughs> My daughter is a four. She. Is trip in your seat. Yeah, so that's what it is. Man, my family be crazy. <laughs> you just got one. You gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, just one, just one kid. <laughs> He's like, I'm All right, I'm going slow, man. I'm going slow. Hey, go ahead, Drew. Uh, yeah, man, I just. What are, what are some of the relationships that you've built here? Obviously, a lot of people have formed a relationship with Seku. Uh, he's probably one of the more popular players to play for that team to come up for the Pistons. Uh, did you build any personal relationships with some of the guys in there this year that you, you know, maybe did not years prior to? Um, yeah, like I, I can't say necessarily um, for the Pistons because, like, like I, I wasn't around them as much. Like I know Kyrie Thomas from home. Christian Wood, I know him from like playing him in the league. We've built uh, like a good little respect for each other. But besides that, the biggest name, I, like Dante, he's somebody that earned my respect just to, like how he went about it. Like he's somebody that is going to be an NBA, an everyday NBA guy, not a G League. You know what I mean? He he a down to earth dude that I don't know respect. An NBA guy or somebody that cleaned the gym, like he, he, he don't care who you is, he got the same approach. So like, when you see somebody like him, like it, it, it rubs off on you. 
Uh, man, I'll tell you this, man. A lot of Pistons fans are extremely high on Dante Hall. So, so they, 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 they love this guy. So we will hope to do some great things for him in the future. But uh, I got an- another question. So how how, how the uh, the coaches and, like, the coaching staff, like, how did how they have to, like, get better? Uh. The coaching, the coaching staff helped me mentally more than anything because we had a we had a, a lottery pick on our coaching staff. We had you know different like we had a, our our coaching staff was very diverse, and I had conversations with the coaches just because like I was in different different spaces mentally. Like uh, at the beginning of the year, I served a five games uh, suspension for marijuana, so like my whole approach from for for this year was different and just personally. I was everywhere, and, I, and the coaching staff did a, a wonderful job keeping me sane, keeping me motivated, and I can't do nothing but give them the, the m- utmost respect and love because this 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 season showed me a lot, and they helped me with it. You know, uh, when we when we talk to you guys, you guys on the D League, it, it helps us understand what's going on because I've seen a lot of teams with like this team. And uh, the last team, the last couple years, they so they so close together, so tight knit. And what you saying about how the coaches are going going that extra mile, it, it explains a lot. But um, like as you said, it's a lot of people that are big fans of safety. So I wanted to ask you just your personal opinion. What, what do you think of safety, and uh, what do you think his potential could be? Like how nice is he? Because we we don't know. Like <laughs> you know, we looking at it through, like is this dude nice? Like how nice is this dude, man? Say, say, cool is the truth. I feel like, like I, I've been around a few NBA guys. I can't say I've been in the league or nothing, but I feel like he can average 15 points if he comes to work every day. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't. I his. I can't say he's ceiling just because the boy is 18, 19. He's six eight, and he's super athletic. His ceiling is where he, where he wanted to be. Now, if he come in there and be immature, or get complacent, then he. It's just somebody that's going to collect some check. But I think he got everything he needs, the right mindset, the right people around him, and all the talent in the world. Okay, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm always interested to hear what people got to say about him because uh, our, us fans, because, like, from France, well, well, yeah, he's not from France, but he lived there. We don't know much about Facebook. Like we only know what we see. So like we, we gotta know behind the scenes what, what he's really working on. It's good to hear that. But uh hey bro, you got another question there? Yeah, so uh what do you think about uh, Lou uh King in your opinion? how do you think about his style of play? His style of play? I like his style of play, especially when he said forget it and just start playing basketball. At first he was trying to you know, he a rookie. He's trying to figure out what, where where he's gonna find his shots and pick it. And my big thing with him was you too big, you too skilled to to be you know holding anything back. I feel like he an everyday NBA guy too. You know what I mean? I don't feel like he needs the right situation. I feel like he just got it, especially if somebody gives him the right opportunity. He gonna score, and he's six nine and don't scare, uh, don't care about playing defense. Okay, okay. Um, hey, it's good to hear that the players we bring it up can actually play. I mean, if, if you were saying, like, hey, these dudes are some scrubs, we'd be like, yo, for real? But, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I wanted to ask, uh, any any G League game, it doesn't matter if you was on the uh, Pistons, uh, Pistons or not, but what was your uh, favorite uh, game that you played, if you even remember the games and, like, why? My favorite game that I played, uh, honestly – was my last year my first game of the season and i only say that because my family got to watch i started you know my daughter was there my girl like everybody was there that you know i needed to be what they didn't need to be on tv or nothing everybody got to come watch me play professionally i played well even though we didn't we didn't get the win but it was just the 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 environment Okay, okay. Uh, no, Miss, you had another question, man? Uh, yes. Uh, this one may come off a little unorthodox, but, like, if you had a coach that you really wanted to play on your like, president of the past, well, it was president of the past, who would you want to uh, be uh, playing for as a coach? What coach would you want to play under? 
Oh, I think he's lagging out. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess we'll wait till we come back then. Um, so my fault. Like, I gave you like, hey, thank you. I gave you like plenty of chances, man. I was waiting on you. <laughs> hey, no, bro. No, I wasn't trying to ignore any. I wasn't sorry, not ignore, but I wasn't trying to interrupt anybody. No, it's I all mean, good. So, uh, okay, we got technical yeah. difficulties. We we getting them back now. Um, while that's going on, make sure you guys in the chat like the video. It's above the rim with the DSA. We got uh, Travion Hollins in the building, uh, NCAA steals leader, you know, averaging 2.6 steals on our team and eight assists. Uh, has the most assists in the game for the Grand Rapids Drive in their history with 18 assists in the game. So uh, this guy's a very good, uh, nice young guard that we're talking to. Shout out to everyone in the chat. If you guys have any questions for him, make sure you guys uh, put the questions in the chat, man. Technology always try to mess with things when it's going crazy. Let me let me look at the chat real quick. Um, there we go. We got got there we go. I don't there know what happened. My fault. <laughs> we back. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> it's all good, man. We back. What coach? Uh, present or past, who uh, would you like to play for if you, you know, had the opportunity to do so? Uh, where? It, it, it just depends. Like, it, all of my coaches all the time in, in the NBA or high school, like, it just, where? Yeah, NBA, NBA. NBA and any coach I want? Yep. Um, I said I, I, would, I would have Eric Barron's as my head coach. Marty as my uh, as my as, as assistant coach, and Jay Landstrom as my other assistant, and ironically, that's my TBT team that got put out uh, of the tournament. But that's that'd be the coaching staff that I play for. Him. Oh, okay. oh, why, why why those guys? Those just your guys or something different? Um, I just feel like they got it. They got it all. Um, Barons. He, he he got a, he got a mind that nobody else has, and then he has he does he does a great job of combining everybody. You know what I mean? Like you can't just put anything in a pot and call it gumbo. And he got everything that you need to to make it taste good. Um, Marty, he is a, a people's person that knows basketball. You know what I mean? Like he would break down how many possessions that we need to win. And if you can do that and relate to us, I feel like you are a dang good coach. So. And then Landstrom, he he the dirty he the dirty work guy that is the team nutritionist. So like, I I just feel like we got everything we need. All right, all right, go ahead, uh, say you got that. You got a question, bro? Yeah. So uh, like before I say the question, I did think that was really interesting that uh, you said Lewis King is a really good player. I mean, Craig Sword said the th same thing about Lewis King. Craig Sword said that uh, Lewis can be a really really good player, and he has a lot of faith in him. Uh, but my Question is, what advice do you have uh, for people who are trying to become a good basketball player? Um, first off, be realistic and star in your role. Everybody can't be LeBron or Steph and average 30. You know what I mean? Find your niche and do what you do to the best thing of your ability. And then you're, you're going to get a better role. Or, you know what I mean? Like just, just be you to the best that you can be. And everything else is going to take care of itself. Man, I love what you said because uh, a lot of people, obviously, we, we trying to be Steph and LeBron, and that's that's not what you're trying to do. And maybe doing that ends up you not being in the league, but if you just tried to be yourself, you know, do what you could do, maybe, maybe you would have been more successful. But uh, I like that, man. That's a great advice, man. But uh, Drew, you got a question, bro? Uh, so you compared yourself to a little bit of Patrick Beverly earlier. So, you know, instantly when you said that, I thought about the game where he played Lonzo for the first time, knocked him on his butt, struck him to the NBA. Is there some matchups that, whether if it's college or wherever, if you go back to AAU or high school or middle school or whenever, that you just look forward to playing that guy and you wanted to go at him toe-to-toe? -to -toe? Um, I don't know. I like, I, I like competition. So, like, I'm not somebody that's going to back down. I like the big names, like Frank Mason and them. I was hyped to play them, the them type of guys. Like Frank has always been somebody that's thrived in his moment. You know what I mean? Like at Kansas and then in the G, he's been just dominating. And we was down 19 and came back and won. So like, it, it just depends. Like I can't say it's one guy, even though 
I'm gonna just say it. Like those little high school, that high school, that new high school team and all that. Like, it, I, they putting a little target on their back. But besides that, anybody like anybody good, I want. I like that. I like that. That that's Detroit mentality right there, man. I like it. You already know. So, uh, do you got any thoughts on the NBA uh, coming back in the, in this bubble? Because you know. As you know, obviously everything just stopped, and now they're y'all talking about the league coming back. You got any thoughts on, on that? Because uh, the G League didn't finish, did it? I thought it was. Uh, no, nah, they stopped us. Yeah, they stopped yeah. us. Uh, okay, so y'all, y'all got to get y'all season going too. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, like, I'm with the NBA. Honestly, like with the NBA going back, uh, I'm at the bottom of the totem pole. So I feel like my opinion is a little bit author because if they come calling I'm I, I, I get the opportunity. That's all I can say on this. Yeah man, um <laughs> that there's a lot of stuff going on with the with the players in the NBA. It's just crazy stuff you know but uh if you guys have if you guys yeah, have then you can't be misquoted saying the wrong stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right, yes. Right. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, so, like, what are your, like, favorite players? Because, like, my favorite players are, like, Seiku. I love Jordan Bone. I think he could be really, really special. Uh, like, what are your, like, favorite players of all time? Of all time? Yeah. Man, Chris Paul. And, shoot, I like Chris Paul. I like LeBron. Mm, I don't like myself, everybody else is <laughs> everybody else. Is nice. Hey, there's no problem with that. And uh, no, you there? I guess he's not available. Go ahead, Bravo. Yeah, so uh, I, I seen we seen like uh, Jordan Bone in the G League, really impressive, very like nice playmaker. You're his colleague in general. Why do you think he he had a lot of a lot of struggle when he came to the NBA as a start. Um, he had to figure out what, like, what a new environment, new new situation. He was just thrown out there. But I think JB is going to shock a lot of people when he get a real opportunity. Um, that boy can shoot. He can he can do everything on the court. He everything on the court. So uh, I, I can't. I, I don't know. I can't say that he struggled. He just really didn't get a for real opportunity. You're gonna do like I said. You're gonna do so much with five ten right. minutes. No, That's right. Mm-hmm. I compare him to like Derrick Rose's play style, likewise. Mm-hmm. You know, he play. and he's super explosive, like him too. Yes, hundred like percent. When I was watching him in summer league, I was like, "Oh my god, this guy is like his speed, his athleticism." He don't. Even, you don't even like. You don't even know he's that bouncier and athletic. Like, my, I didn't. Even, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know none of the combine, all that stuff. Like, I knew that he got drafted by them, and that was who I had to beat out to get some minutes. So the first time I got to practice and we playing, he actually stole one of my passes and went and dunked the heck out of it. I'm like, God, like you know. Okay. <laughs> like, all right, bro. All right, I see. I see you. Yeah, like, all right. <laughs> I see. I see you. Uh, see, I want. I want to uh, circle back to something that you said because this is something I've been harping on a lot. Not even for players just trying to make it on the roster, but players already on the roster like Jordan Bone. And some of the guys on two-way contracts, it's about, like, opportunity. I feel like the NBA, it's a place where it's the NBA. Whether it's G League, whether it's the roster, it's the best basketball players in the world Definitely. are in the NBA. So it's tons of people who don't get shots that uh, it's all about opportunity. It's about who you know. It's about building those connections. So how, how do you feel, like, what's, what's going on in building the connections to uh, – Get up on the roster. Do you think it's something to do with like having to uh, just just balling out, having the right agent or people just liking you? Because to me, at the end of the day, it's all about opportunity. Some of the best players don't get opportunity in one place, get in another place, and then they take up. Yeah, uh, it just depends. Like you never like with 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 this like everything moves so fast, so you never know who gonna who gonna have, who gonna be a job, who gonna have what job. You know what I mean? Like. You can be an assistant here uh, for the drive tomorrow, but be a sit or a head coach or assistant for the Knicks tomorrow. You know what I mean? You never know. You never know what's gonna happen. So 
like 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 I said about Dante, I try to approach everybody the same. You know what I mean? Everybody with the utmost respect, showing everybody love. Not not be, just because oh you might be my boss one day, but you know that's what everybody deserves. Like that's the type of stuff I go about my life now. You know what I mean? Right now, without basketball being going. So it, relationships with everybody, everything in this networking. Because like even if I don't get to the NBA like now, like I hopefully I do, but. Like I'm networking for jobs at the work because I want to be a coach. So like people know that I, I know the game, all that. So I'm a point guard. I play. Like that's gonna help me out. So all I gotta do is continue, continue the right way. Hey man, I'm just glad you focused and got the plan set up because you know a lot, a lot, a lot of people don't have that plan set up. So as long as, long as you got that, you'll be good. But uh, yeah. no, man, you had a question. Oh uh, yeah. So my question would be. What aspect about your jump shot you figure you have to improve on? Like, is it the goal, or timing, whatever the case may be? Or just need to no, um, honestly, I feel like it's the it's shooting the right shots. Like, if you look at it, ten of the threes that I don't know how many shot threes I shot this year, but ten of those were um, half court shots or shots from at the end of the quarter. At the end of the quarter, you know what I mean? When I get the ball, just throwing it out there. Like, I'm not Curry. I shouldn't shoot those shots. That's that help my percentage. I take those ten away and then then just shooting the right shots. So if I recognize like this is a good shot, I gotta shoot that. I can't just shoot the shot just to shoot it. And like that that's gonna help everything else. Everything else is is good. I just gotta show that it's good. Um, go ahead, Drew. So you know you've been talking very positive about some of your teammates right here. Is this leadership role something you're trying to embrace? Because you've talked nothing but positively about them. You've told us what these players need to work on and help them realize how good they actually are. Are you trying to be a leader for this team? Is that something that you envision yourself as, or that wherever you go, that you are a leader and you can help people get better? Uh, I, no, I mean, like, I, it, it sounds weird saying like this is like that's just me, but like I feel like I'm a team guy. Like I'm not somebody that you want to play against, but I love the, like the people that play with me. Love me. So like I, I don't know I it sound I I don't know like that's something I feel like ask somebody else just because like I don't want to talk about myself in that aspect like I I don't know I'm a point guard and like I need everybody to play well so like I can't talk bad about somebody not like even if you miss ten shots in a row I guarantee you an eleven shot I'm telling you to shoot it so like that, I don't know. Hey man, <laughs> ain't no ain't no problem with that, man. Uh, like I said earlier, everything you was telling me and what uh, Craig told me explains why our team look as uh, tightly knit as it actually does. So uh, y'all 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 out there, y'all out there winning a lot of games too. So, y'all was a successful team. Yeah. Uh, probably you got a question, man. Uh, so uh, Trey, I mean, what, what do you think about the pick and roll? Is the All NBA is really transitioning towards the pick and roll? For point guard is the most important thing. I seen you work on that, and I went I went to Grand Rapids games a few times. But what do you think about that? The pick and roll is how it's gonna, it's gonna make me some money because <laughs> like that's how, that's how I do it. Down the phone, I'm coming right in. But yeah, the pick and roll is that's everything for me. Um, that you know, like with the pick and roll, I can hide hide my little my little jump shot right now, but. Uh, so like, so like with it, I, I use that a lot. That's that's how that's how I get a lot of my assists in the ball screen and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. Uh, any, anybody got any more questions? Go ahead, take them. All right. Uh, so are you like a so what do you do to prepare for each game? Are you like a music type of guy or uh, what do you do to prepare for your games? Uh, I. I do the same thing. I, I I'm a ritual type of guy. Like I gotta do the same thing. Um, not not necessarily a, a a music guy, but I like soft music on game day. I can't listen to nothing heavy and hard. I gotta have some type of melody to get me, you know, have a nice little vibe. I need to sway. You know? Like so, like a game. A song I listen to on game day is uh, Pleasure P Under. Um, so. Uh, like it just, it just like the little piano and all that stuff gets like, you know, yeah, yeah, gets all that little roughness out. Yeah. So, uh, what's the, uh, how's the music choice in that locker room? Who, who's controlling the ox? Trayshawn Thurman is. Trayshawn, I've been trying to get him on, man. I've been trying to get Trayshawn on. Uh, yeah, we, I, I got you on that. That's my buddy. 
Yeah, but uh, yes, yeah, so Trey got it. Yeah, Trey he do the music. He, he, Trey is a is a peaceful is a great guy to have because he he do the music and he picked the food for the team and everybody Ooh, gave him that trust. Food. Yeah, he picks the. Oh, food. Oh, hey man, if he got the food on lock, then yeah. I can trust him. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, he, he's the food, food guy. Trey Shaw's the food guy. If y'all need any, I'm, he not even from Grand Rapids, and that was my roommate. Yeah. He did. He had like this list of like twenty places to eat. I'm like, damn, we've been here for four months. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, man. That, 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 that's that's great, man. That's great. Um, so I wanted to ask. It, it was a question uh, in the chat. It said, "Uh, in the NBA, it's not about who you know. It's just about how well you play. Do you do you believe that or not?" Yes and no. Um, because like. You gotta know somebody. Like, uh, it, it's hard. It's, it's, it, it got to me, so I have to say, it. like, uh, like you said, we have a lot of point guards in in Grand Rapids this year, and the Pistons called up somebody from the um from the Clippers G League team. So, like, you know, they gotta know somebody. Like, like I don't, I, I don't know. Like, you gotta know somebody, and you gotta be good. So, like, I, I would say he was playing all right, and he knows somebody to get what he got. So, like. It's about it's about. Oh great! Um, if anybody got any questions before we let uh Tradion go, make sure you drop your questions in the chat. Anybody on the panel with uh some more questions? So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one from Buck. Uh, he put this one in the comments. Uh, he wants to know your thoughts about uh the new rule where people don't have to go to college; they can go straight to the G League now instead of uh going to uh, college to try to get drafted. I mean, you'll be playing some better talent wise there, uh, coming straight out of high school. What's your what's your thoughts on like that? Like, like last year, like if a Zion went there to the G League instead of going to Duke or something. What's your whole thoughts of playing people like that? Um. Is he breaking up or like? I think he's frozen breaking? again. I think he's frozen again. Okay, I'm about to be like, so what's going on? I hope this isn't me. No, I think um, we, I think we lost him again. Well, technology will try to mess with you, but it ain't stopping nothing, man. <laughs> we'll we'll get him back, dog. We'll get him back. But uh, all right, while while we got a second, uh, Nomas, let's get your thoughts on Killian Hayes. Oh man. Uh, I really like – I think he's, to me, that Piston-style point guard, man, when I look at him. Uh, the guy can defend, as we know. He can definitely pass. That's what really caught my eye on him is his passing ability. Like, I seen on film where this guy was down there double team. He still threw an accurate pass to the big man down below. I was like, wow. The guy has a good arm to throw the ball and lob it, man. I, that's what the Pistons need. They need a game manager. I think he offers you that best skill set. I know LaMelo is more explosive when it comes to, like, scoring in his uh, transition, but I think Killian Hayes offers more of that, you know, Braniac role for the Pistons that they always used to have when they had a quality point guard, man. So I think he – I want to say he's more of a fit for us. That's kind of where I'm at with him. Oh, well, y'all know me. I'm in love with Killian Hayes and – uh me and my, my cousin, shout out to him. He will be on one of these shows someday. We really high on Danny Abdia. He higher on Danny Abdia than he is on Killian Hayes. Oh, you know, I'm J-Mo. You know we had conversations about that. We was, I'm like, you're crazy. He's like, no, nah, man, Danny Nice, though. I'm like, what are you talking about? My whole point in saying this is Killian Hayes is a point guard archetype that can play defense. To me, he only has one weakness. One. He goes left. So and he has to become ambidextrous because players who go left, you, you have to really be Drew Holiday level nice. You can't be R.J. Barrett level nice. You got to be nice if you're going left. To me, that's his only problem. He has athleticism. His vision is great. Like Bravo said, he's amazing in the pick and roll. Like He'll pick you apart. Like Killian Hayes, day one. I can't promise you he'll be good at defense. I can't promise you that he'll be able to score. I can't promise you he'll be able to shoot. But I guarantee you day one, Day one, he's going to be elite in that pick and roll. Spent with Christian Wood and Blake Griffin? Oh, man, come on. Like, like that, and that's what we need. We need that special playmaker. And I do think Killian Hayes has an offensive bang. I do think he can actually shoot a little bit better than some of his percentages. 
and I like his mid-range game. I like his floater. I love his patience and that he's never rushed. I think Killing Hayes is like my, my like my second favorite player in the draft after Melo. I'm not saying he's better than Edwards, but uh I think he's the right point guard for the situation. But like if not, you go with Melo Edwards or FDL or Obi Toppin. But I think Killing Hayes is the point guard that we need. I'm not buying none of this Dante Exum stuff because Dante Exum couldn't pass the ball like that. Dante Exum wasn't breaking people ankles like this. It, it, it's, it's, it's clips of Killing and Hayes just dribbling on normally and people's ankles getting broke because they can't keep up. So, and I know that's a different type of lead, but these are grown men. Um, I like the I like the D'Angelo Russell and uh, who's the other guy you compare it to him, Bravo? So it was D'Angelo Russell, Spencer Dinwiddie, interesting, oh, and Dinwiddie. and yeah, Kirk yeah. Heinrich, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, I'm, we gonna hope not for it not to be Kirk Heinrich. I like the D'Angelo Russell comparison. <laughs> I think he's extremely similar to D'Lo, like completely. I mean, they're different players, but look at only at D'Lo now. Look at D'Lo his rookie year. If you were watching, I was because I was watching the Lakers. But if you look at D'Lo since his rookie year, he's very comparable to uh, Killian. I think Killian will only get better. He'll only grow, and I think year one he'll be able to pass the ball, and that's what I'm concerned with. And I think he can score too. So I don't think. Uh, and then you, it's like. You're pairing him with Luke Kennard. So I, I think this guy's a great prospect, man. I, I really, truly do. Uh, Drew, you got some thoughts on that, man? Yeah, uh, Noam, you got final thoughts before you got to go real quick? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, real quick, y'all, I just want to say thank y'all for letting me be on the show today. I know I've been missing uh, MIA pretty much for a while. Uh, shout out to Everything King and Mr. Trading on Hillians for joining us on the show. Hopefully, maybe Hillians is the return. I'm not sure. But y'all stay safe out there, man. Uh, keep less. Let's go distance. Hopefully, get our basketball back. And let's get to the draft, man. Stay safe, no. Um, uh, all right, no. We'll see you later. And I did want to say, uh, in case Tradion doesn't uh, show back up, we, we were glad to have him on. It was fun. It was, it's exciting. And uh, I, I know I'm switching gears a little bit. But let, let's talk about the fact that whenever we ask somebody – uh, whenever we ask some people about Seku or Lewis King, they first react like, like uh, somebody in the chat said it earlier. And if you haven't liked the chat, uh, go ahead and like the chat. Uh, they said they think uh, Craig Sword and um, and tra- trading. I said the same thing about Seku. They're like, oh my, that boy nice. Like that boy is special. I'm like, that's all I need to hear. He got all the talent in the world. Only thing that can stop him is himself. Now you're hearing this from his teammates. He's like, well, his teammates are gonna say certain things, but look, it's not about the compliments. It's about what they actually say in the compliment, and they're explaining his abilities and his God-given athleticism and talent, man. I think that's crazy, but uh, go ahead, Drew. You can tackle Killian or what I was just talking about, whatever you want, man. Uh, I'll tackle them both. I'm, I'm, I can do both. Uh, first, for Killian, man, I like Killian. I think outside of Lamelo, I think he is one of my favorite point guards in the draft. Again, I don't know if he'll be one of the better point guards coming out of the draft. He's going to be a building block. What I mean by that is he's going to need a few years to develop to get better. He's got some good things to contribute to right away, but coming to the NBA, you know, I think he'll get bullied a lot. Uh, defensively, he'll probably struggle, but, I mean, there's not a pass he can't make. I mean, he's got great vision. He can hit people in stride, set them up. He's got just a great instinct for that. Um, but moving on to uh, Seku's teammates talking about him, you're absolutely right. Obviously, you could ask someone uh, on the Pistons about uh, Tim Frazier, and they'll be like, yeah, he's a good guy. You know, he's a good player and all this stuff. That's not what they're saying about Seiko. They're saying, like, wow, like, it's Seiko. Like, they're they're amazed by this guy. Seiko, again, I don't know what his ceiling's going to be. I really don't. But this dude's got hops, so I'm, I'm sure people are going to be amazed by that regardless I mean, you don't see too many players that tall able to move that fast and jump that high. It's super, super rare. And you're seeing a lot – you're seeing it become more common, so I guess we kind of get spoiled by it at the same time. you know. But people aren't supposed to move like that. They're really not. Not that tall. You ain't supposed to jump out the gym like that. But he's got, he's got the complete package. He's going to be good. He's going to be a solid player. Uh, the Pistons got a steal. I still can't believe we got him. The guy's going to be a good shooter. You know, he's got to work on conditioning and really staying at it because it looked like he got tired after that uh, 10, 14 game stretch where he played really well. He got really tired. 
Um, and it's really about being confident, man. Being confident is key. Uh, it's key to young talent, rather if you're a shooter, whatever. If you're in the dunk contest, you have to be confident your dunk's going in. Confidence is so key. And, you know, it's, it's a lot for a foreign player to come over here and uh, kind of get thrown in the fire. Blake went out. Um, we had to throw him in. He started starting all of a sudden after not playing hardly at all for the Pistons. So when you start going back and forth between the G League, playing with different people, and then moving up to the Pistons, playing with different people, chemistry's off. And I think he did pretty well all in all. But when people start talking about him like this, man, oh, it's a beautiful sight, man. And the future, yeah, uh, future is so bright. I wanted to say with Seiku, the only problem with Seiku is he ain't played enough. Mm -hmm. And I don't think a lot of fans really realize that whether it's rookie walls or uh, he's tired or whatever you want to say, his only problem is reps. And if you really know the game of basketball, <laughs> his only problem is really reps. And once he gets those reps, and like, like I'm, see, like I said about his teammate, like of course they're gonna say they're gonna say something, but it's it's what they say. That's like asking me, yo, man, like, like you know, Drew is he is he a good dude? I'll be like, yo, Drew is the best person in the world. This man's, oh my goodness. And then they're like, oh, that's a really great guy. But if you're I'm like, oh, you're gonna make me blush. Like, <laughs> if I was like, if I was like, yeah, you know, he's cool, man. He's a nice fellow. They're like, oh, he, he's all right. But these guys are loving Saquon, man. But my bad. Go ahead. Ah, uh, I'm done. I, I hey, right. I'm done. Okay, yeah, I just, I just feel like it's crazy, like about what they're saying. Anybody else got a comment on that before? Yeah. We, uh, get what your I thoughts think... on no, do Killian as well. All right, all right. Oh uh, well, I already did Killian before he came on. All right, my fault. All right, now you good. Uh, so the what I've been saying since day one, day one. Seiku Dumboya, twenty twenty six MVP. He is a savior. Okay, he is the truth. What uh, what Tradion just said, Seiku is the truth. Take that. Take. I mean, just just let that sink in for a minute. Seiku is the truth. Seiku will be one of the best players in the NBA. I have no doubt about it. No doubt about it. And when people say, oh, the Pistons don't have a bright future, well, we got Troy Weaver now. We got, you know, a guy who could draft well. We got a future MVP. We got Bruce Brown. We got who, honestly, Lewis King, very underrated. Craig Sword and uh, Trey Dion both said very, very good things about him. Uh, so I, like Seku, what people are saying about him, He's very true. Very, very true. He's uh I, I I couldn't be more happy to you know be his biggest fan because uh when everybody starts jumping on the bad wagon, I can say I was here first. So Yeah, uh, can y'all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I think your camera's frozen, but we can hear you. Yeah, your camera is frozen. Oh, no it moves. Oh. Man, it's been, it's been a bad stream for technology, man. Never, nothing has gone right today in terms of this. It happens. Wait, uh, can y'all can hear me now, man? Yeah, yeah I can yeah. hear you. Yeah, man. All right, man. You already know, Drew. Man, whatever. <laughs> no, no. Technology has been trying to destroy this glorious stream, but we, we still been going strong and pumping out all of the good content. Look, everybody, if you're not subscribed to my man in the chat to say say who got next, my man, Evan O'Brien, he is a new member of the DSA. Welcome to the fold. Make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel. Um, uh, Seiku, uh, you can post it in the chat so they can go subscribe. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. We thank you, uh, everything King, for coming on and joining us, and we definitely thank you, uh, Trady Allen Holland, for coming on and, and joining us. It's good. It's always good to talk to the players and get a feel for what's going on. This is the time where we're gonna take questions. So if you have any questions, make sure you drop all of your questions. Now I'm gonna read some comments. Uh, Marvin Tober says Seku is slow by trying to be a team player instead of that guy. Um, I agree with you there because uh, Seku, that's how he was born and bred. These guys coming from these Euro leagues, they're team players, so he he might have to uh, get out of that. But we'll we'll see what goes on with that. Um, unit. Our position. I'm with you on that. Jmo, you're Marvin cutting. Tober. Uh, Marvin Tober says, yes. uh, uh, "Do you think Lewis King can become as good as Chris Middleton?" Yes, I do. And I'm probably the lowest on Lewis King on this panel. 
but yes, I do. Because whenever uh when we ask Craig and um and a uh, trade on the bottom, they like dog, this dude is an NBA player, he nice. So uh I'm gonna listen to the guys who know more than me. But what mm-hmm. do you guys think? Well, I'll say this because I was with you. I didn't I wasn't super high on King. I you know, I don't I didn't I didn't bash him or anything, but after hearing what his teammates have said, I've gone back and watched some highlights of him and he has shown promise and potential. Now, saying Chris Middleton, there's a couple similarities here. When we first got Chris Middleton, uh, like I said, he showed promise and he showed potential. He had some good games. He had some bad games. We ended up trading him for Brennan Jennings, and now he's worked his way into being a multi-time all-star. So it's always a tough comparison when you want someone to be an all-star or compare him next to an all-star, but Chris is nice. Chris is a really nice player. I wish we would never traded him, but yeah, um, he has the potential and the capability of becoming a Chris Milton. He's just got to keep the hard work mindset and his time's going to come here in Detroit. You know, right now we really don't know what to expect out of this team. I would assume in the next two to three years, he's going to get a full opportunity to showcase what he can really do. So in terms of being Chris Middleton, I want him to be the first King, you know, uh, don't worry about being a Chris Milton, be the first Luke King. Uh, I like that, but uh, I'm going to tell you, we need him to be the next Chris Middleton because uh, we need small forwards. And if we don't want to have to draft a star small forward, we need Lewis King to be that small forward. I know Sekou is a small forward too. Don't get me started, but I'm saying we need more than just Sekou as small forward. We need scorers on the wing that can score and defend. I think he can help with that. Bravo, your thoughts? Yeah, I think I'm uh, Lewis King. I think he's one of my favorite. I think outside of Sekou Dumbuya as, as out of those new rookies, Sekou, uh, Lewis King is my most – uh, surprising pick, and I'm th- I think I'm the highest right now at the end of the first year on Lou King compared to Jordan Bone and Dante Hall. Not that I'm not high on Jordan Bone, I'm still really high. I like Jordan Bone, but I think Lou King made the most first impact, and I think he has got a potential to be like one of those kind of players, like uh, uh, Will Barton, maybe of the Denver Nuggets. He- he's got a potential to be the sixth man of uh, on the Detroit Pistons if he really become so good in the future uh, he kind of reminds me of of those guys like will barton or uh, those slim guys who can uh, i forgot the guy who, who who was injured on the uh portland trailblazers who was a really good uh, oh, player. Rodney Hood. What, what's his name rodney hood yes rodney hood he reminds me of rodney hood he got the same kind of body of rodney hood he can he can dribble he can penetrate so the thing is about like i mentioned again i keep mentioning that Luke King has an amazing ball handling, and I think he's got really good potentials. Not, a, I don't know about uh, his shooting potential. I don't think he's as good as a shooter as uh, Chris Middleton, but he's a good, really, of a dribbler. He'd be probably a better dribbler than than uh, Chris Middleton in the future. You'll see this. Um, I hope he becomes mm-hmm. the player that, that is the uh, backup uh, and, and is going to take over Tony Snell, in my opinion, and, and hopefully oh, maybe the sixth man of the year. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I'm a, look, Chris Middleton, one of the best shooters in the league, and it has been for like three years. So you can't say he's a, as good as a shooter. But Lewis King is like a 38%, 39% three point yeah. shooter in the NBA. Like, he's a, he's a good shooter, and he's always going to be a good shooter. Like, his whole career, when he gets minutes, he'll be shooting anywhere from 37 up. So he's a good three point shooter. But I like the Chris Middleton comparison because. Middleton, um, he had to work on a lot of skills in this game, but like, I mean, you could argue that Lewis King was better than Chris because of, if you're going off of college coming out, so it, it's a nice comparison. But uh, guys, we about to wrap up the show. If you guys have any other questions for us, make sure you drop your questions in the chat. Make sure you guys like the video if you haven't already. Again, thank you to everything King and Tradion Hollins for joining us, man. We got a new member of the DSA, my man, Evan O'Brien. Evan, make sure you drop your YouTube in the chat so everybody can go subscribe. Make sure you go subscribe to my mans. But uh, all right, Bravo, uh, final thoughts? I'm going to just go with one question here in the chat quickly. Question from Marvin Tolbert is really interesting question. Do you guys feel like Troy Weaver can surprise us in the draft and pick up a mystery player in the draft high? And uh... Yes, when we draft Danny Evdia, y'all going to be mad. And I'm going to be sitting here like, man, that boy nice. And y'all gonna be pissed. No, hey. Bravo likes him. You know Bravo likes him. Who? Danny. I'm not really I that. Mean, y'all y'all kind of shitted on Danny. I was like the only one who liked him when we did the oh, player review. 
He's no. he's Daniel Gallinari. That's about his ceiling, bro. Yeah, I'm not really. Oh no, man, Danny, man, Gallinari can't dribble like that, bro. Gallinari don't got that bag. This boy, I'm telling you, Danny Avdia is six nine, that, and he can dribble, and he got a bag on him, dog. They don't compare people to Luca for nothing. He got a bag on him. That's Nineteen points for two years. They can't the compare it Nineteen point five assists in the Euro League, Euro League invoke MVP, bro. I'm telling you, FD is nice, dog. Y'all go mark my words. FD is nice. I hope he is. He's a nice player, but I, I don't. He doesn't turn into Omri Kaspi, the guy who from Israel. No, nah. man. Why you? Why y'all keep naming players that's just trash? Like, <laughs> Kaspi, like you gotta look at this. You gotta look at the skill set coming out. Kaspi didn't have his skill set. Like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Armory Caspi, like, oh my gosh, but give me your final thoughts, Bravo. Okay, my final thoughts. I like the show. It was nice to see uh, Trey Hollins. Uh, it was really good. It was a short, but it was good and focused. And I think he, he made some nice conversations. We're going to make some uh, take back out of this uh, uh, show at some point in time, hopefully. And in terms of the draft, I think I'm definitely high on uh, Killian Hayes. I would love him to be picked by the Pistons. Uh, I'll be extremely excited to have him on, on the uh, Detroit Pistons next year. Uh, I'll hand the mic to Drew. Well, I want to say, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because I'm looking at I, uh, uh, what's his name? Who said this? Because uh, I I need to find his name because he said Lucas says he plays like Danny. What? Or he models him his game after Danny? Uh, unit two, uh, unit two. I'm gonna need a, a report or articles yeah. to show me that he's not lying. Yeah. Because uh, if Luke had said that, oh boy! But uh, three one three shade more. Or am I quoting stats from like three to four games? No, in the Euro League, Danny Avdia, when he was like seventeen, averaged nineteen and five. When this year he averaged uh, eleven and what five in the Euro League. So I don't, I don't know. But um, go ahead, Drew. So I want to, I want to thank King and TD for coming on, man. Uh, great show, and everyone who's watching right now, who'll be watching later after we're off the air. If there's a player, G League, Pistons, NBA, whoever that you want on the show, reach out to him and tell him to come on to the hottest basketball show. And that's above the rim, man. Uh, we're trying our best to get more people on the show for you guys. It's a blast. Um, you know, we got to shout out Evan for getting him on the show, man. Evan's coming in clutch and getting these players on here, man. And, you know, it's not enough like we got a couple more special guests, man. It's like getting better and better and better. So, uh, definitely make sure if you guys want to come on the show, you go reach out to him and tell him to come on above the rim. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys like that video. Uh, go in the description, subscribe to all the DSA members, go to the DSA website and check all that stuff out, man. Uh, draft, man, it'll be here before we know it. We're still like three or four months away, but it will be here before we know it because we have nothing else to hold on to for the Pistons. So, gotta stay positive, <laughs> man. And that's the bottom line because Detroit Drew said so, man. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> All right, man. All right. Uh, say you got next. Final thoughts? Uh, today was, I feel, one of our best shows. I mean, it was an amazing show. TD was great. King was great. Uh, I'm going to keep getting uh, keep getting some players for y'all. I think uh, I think I could pull something off. I'm going to keep it to myself, but I think I, I got something. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's an it was an amazing show. Thank you very much to whoever tuned in my youtube is evan o'brien if you guys want to sub there i would really appreciate it go watch one of my videos or two yeah, just post, it, post it in the chat man real quick all right let me get my phone so i can do it real quick but uh yeah everybody who tuned in thank you so much everybody i hope everyone has an amazing night and uh peace out as he uh post huh uh as he uh, posts that in the chat, I, I do want to say shout out to everybody that came through. We we always try to have the great content for you guys. Shout out to King and Tradeon Hollins for joining us. And I do want to say we got some big stuff brewing, like some big name people that y'all ain't even thought about that we putting in work and we going to bring on this show to give y'all the best Detroit sports basketball roundtable out there, man. Shout out to everyone in the DSA. Shout out to all of the people in the chat. And I will say, uh, Killian Hayes, him or Lamelo, or Danny Evdia. That's how I'm feeling right now. Or James Wiseman. That that I'm feel I'm feeling like that. I think Trey Weaver is gonna surprise us because I don't know if we'll get that top three pick. We'll see what happens with all of that, man. But shout out to everybody in the chat. Shout out to the Pistons for going out and getting Trey Weaver. That's what I'm talking about. 
It is Free Smoke Saturday. Y'all already know what it is. All right, man. Y'all have a great night, man. We out.